Hello and good morning to you watching Sewing good Street morning. this Sunday, good morning. Sunday morning. Welcome to Sewing morning. Street. Morning. How are, are you all? My name is Vicky Carroll. Um, welcome uh, We've got a brilliant morning for, for you today. Hours. Really I'm brilliant morning. morning. But so much going on. Jules Mayouf is here. She's very excited in the new studio as well. She's doing some sewing out in the green room. She's been getting ready in the dressing room. She's like, I just love all this space. She walked around, she went, you've got a kitchen. We're like, well, actually, we've got three. <laughs> We've got three. Uh, so anyway, I'll tell you what's coming up in today's show in a bit. Let's start, as we always do, with a brilliant early bird. I've got to start straight away with this because a lot of people have already checked out. Uh, this is the thing. Eagle Eyes on the website, I know, have already been spotting some of the great deals we've got today and checking out already. Uh, so, shall we start with beautiful vanilla solid 100% cotton quilting weight fabric Perfect for your stash. It's going to be great for today's show, actually. Open your order nice and early. You're getting two and a half metres here, which is a lot of fabric. I'll try and open it all out so you can see. But I don't know whether you can see the thing. We're all kind of matching in, really, aren't we? All of the projects today. This is going to be brilliant with lots of projects that we've got today. It's going to be matching with lots of the fabrics we've got as well. I'm thinking to do some lovely applique over the top of it, maybe with your barley pops or your hessians or uh, any of your sort of lovely autumnal colour fabrics. It's going to look great with this. £13.96 is a saving of £3.49, which means you're getting half a metre for free. Let me try and open it out so you can see. I'm thinking those of you that are uh, maybe finishing some un finished projects, some UFOs maybe, if you're wanting to back some quilts. It's not extra wide, but if you see how much fabric you're getting, it's two and a half metres. So if you're multi-buying on this, it will come as two and a half metre pre-cuts. The warehouse have already pre-cut this for you. I mean, it's, I've got a big studio and yet it's still probably going to be too big for me to show you on telly. Uh, but look, you've got so much fabric. If you want to do some applique projects, it's a lot, isn't it? Two and a half metres of 100% cotton, 112 wide, quilting weight. Um, going to be great even though if you're thinking of dressmaking, if you're thinking, it is obviously just be aware, it will, it will give you more of a structured garment. If you're thinking for lining any, uh, any bags or any um, uh, purses, if you want to back any quilts, if you want to do any um, cushion backs or cushion fronts even and appliquing onto them, it would look beautiful. It's just great to have in your stash. Now, we've got less than 50 remaining. For £13.96, it is going to be a quick selling early bird. Whenever we do fabric bundles like this, they always sell out early, especially when it's a neutral colour. Uh, this is your vanilla colour, which is, I think, slightly softer and warmer than if you were to use quite a stark white. Don't get me wrong, I like it when you have that dramatic white background, but this, especially as we're going in towards the autumn with your barley pops, with your hessians, with your Lewis and Irene's, with your Tildes, this is going to look gorgeous. So you're going to be able to mix and match it in with lots of fabric and it will still give you a nice warm background. Maybe if you've got the William Morris Fat Quarters, this would look really, really nice with the William Morris Fat Quarters. So there's a couple that have gone missing in our studio today and I know that the guys in the gallery are going, someone's had them, it's you, Vix, isn't it? I know how much you were eyeing up those fabrics. No, I haven't taken them, I promise. I promise, not guilty. I do love them, though. I would love whoever did take them to just say, right, I'll take half the blame, share it with me, and I'll have half of them. Um, they're beautiful, aren't they? £13.96, two and a half metres. It's gorgeous quality, rose and hubble cotton for 13 pounds and 96 pence. Over a third of the stock has already gone and we are, what, three minutes past eight? Three minutes past eight, four minutes past eight. I don't think it's gonna last the hour, put it that way. So if you are checking out this morning, remember it's only one PMP all day long. So you can now, <laughs> you can now, uh, of course, purchase as much as you want, whether it be larger items on the website, like a, an, a, an adjuster form, or whether you're looking at sewing machines, or whether you're just simply buying some thread or some pins or some extra sewing machine needles or another half metre of a complementing colour or some fat quarters, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Just check out now and it's one PMP all day till midnight tonight. You've saved your PMP almost, haven't you? 50p off, uh, well, 50p less than saving your postage and packaging on this one, which is great, isn't it? 
13 pounds and 96 pence is your early bird saving today half the stock now gone I will keep you updated on that one as we go through, but I, I just think it's going to be perfect for your stash, isn't it? Loads that you're going to be able to do with vanilla. Uh, two and a half metres for that price is brilliant. Now, this hour, we're going to be talking quilting. We're going to be talking all things quilting, getting you kitted out with lots of great tools. One of the most important parts of quilting, and in fact, in general, every part of sewing, you will hear all of our guest designers talk about how important pressing is. We do a lot of pressing and there's a difference from ironing, like ironing all of your clothes and your family's clothes, to pressing. Pressing is an integral part of sewing. It's virtually as important as your sewing machine, I'd say, is having an iron and your ironing board and your mat. Um, so, We've been talking about this a lot over the last few days, um, or, or the last, well I say this, we've been talking about it a lot over the last week or so, and we haven't been able to have it on the show. So, da -da -da, we've got here today in the studio, we've got your best press in the linen scent, which is absolutely beautiful, it's so fresh, it smells like you've done all of your washing, you know, that fresh linen, beautiful scent, it's going to make your workroom smell amazing. Now, the reason that we choose to bring on Best Press, as opposed to other starch sprays, is because we've found that lots of our guest designers, lots of our viewers, lots of people who have got in contact with us have said Best Press is their spray of, cho of choice. So, it is, as I say, um, a, a technically sort of a starch spray, but unlike other starch spray, it will have no clogging. So I don't know whether um, you've experienced, especially on dark fabrics, I've found if you've used certain sprays, it can leave like a flaky residue on the surface of your fabric, which you don't want, do you? Um, if you are working with cotton fabrics, especially with bias edges, you can find that they can warp out of shape, they can stretch, and, and you've got to be careful handling them too much or pressing. Whereas this is going to really, really help to, um, to keep them in the right shape if you give it a really good spray before or in fact actually Sally was saying yesterday if you do warp your fabric for whatever reason by accident if you give it a good spray with best press and give it another press it should sort itself out which is brilliant so it says in here um, two products in one it's for starch and it's a starch spray and it's for sizing as well so as I say it is going to help with it with that warping um, you can use this on all fabrics so you can use this on any of your really more delicate fabrics that you would be concerned about spraying. I, I mean, I know it looks blue or um, lilac-y colour here, but it will dry completely clear. So even if you're using this on a white fabric, it will be absolutely fine. No clogging, no waste, no flaking, even on dark fabrics, as I say, no residue or shine. So it's not going to leave any shiny surface. It's going to dry completely matte. No spotting. It makes your ironing easier. I find if you get some new fat quarters, in fact, I've got, let me um, just get my ironing mat out. We are going to be talking about this mat in a minute. It's just 11 99 by the way, which is going to really, really go a long, long way. If you get fat quarters or any scrap fabrics that tend to have quite stubborn creases, I mean, this one, it, it isn't that crease, actually. I'm just going to use our open one, which is the, um, the lavender. So remember, you are looking at the vanilla one. It has just like the, exactly the same nozzle as, as this one, which gives you a really nice, fine mist. It's not going to soak your fabric at all. And then it is going to really, really help as well with your ironing. Oh, my gosh, it smells... That one smells beautiful. Remember, we're um, today looking at the linen smell, which is, again, not overpowering. Um, it's just a nice, fresh linen smell. I know not everybody likes lavender, so it's nice to be able to bring you the linen spray today. So just give it a bit of a spritz before you press your fabrics, and it will just give you such beautiful, crisp, fabric how lovely does that look and now no wet patches um, no blue sort of uh, or purple in this case you're not going to see any coloring that will run it will dry completely uh, clear uh, it also relaxes those stubborn creases so if you are working with fabrics that does tend to crease a lot like a linen for example it's going to be a really good idea to, to give it a good spritz of best press and I also find fabrics that can be quite difficult sometimes ones that tend to slip and slide all over the place if you give it a spray with best press before it will almost 
And I'm not going to use the word stiffen because it doesn't change the, the feel of it, but it will just give it a bit more structure, I find, whilst you're sewing. And then once you've pressed it, it just feels beautiful. Stock up now because we are really, really limited. Also, let me just carry on reading what it says on the um, on, on the packet. Also, so that it's completely acid free um, and it also doesn't attract bugs. I know sometimes you can get starch sprays that, that, that do. Um, so £11.99. It's a bit, it is the larger bottle that we offer. I think we've done some of the smaller ones in the past, but you do get uh, 500ml for £11.99. Now it's easy to sort of store away, but I just have mine in my, I've got one in my craft cupboard. I've got like a cupboard with all my bits and bobs, but then I've also got one with my ironing board. I like to press my clothes with it. And especially with the linen, it does give it a really lovely fresh scent, which, you know, sometimes those, um, have you ever tried those balls that you put into your washing machine that make your, your clothes smell lovely? It's, it's literally like this. It's literally like when you um, spray your linen, best press, when you're ironing your clothes, you get that smell. Oh, it's just so lovely and fresh. It is so lovely. So you just spray directly onto your fabric and iron away. It's absolutely simple. No spotting. Um, they also can make your your seams really nice and crisp. So even though, yes, it's very good at taking your, uh, your creases out, if I give it a spritz on a crease, the creases that we need and those seams when we want a nice crisp edge, it is also going to give it a really, really lovely pressed clear line as well that you can see. But I do love it, it's absolutely brilliant product which across all boards whether you're a dressmaker whether you're a quilter a bag maker whether you do soft furnishings we all talk about pressing and how important it is so to be able to have best press back in stock uh, in the studio we've talked about it a few uh, a few times over the last few days saying oh i think it's on the website grab it whilst you can it's now really really limited so we thought we'd just uh, let you know it's 11 pounds 99 pence the ironing sheet that i'm using i think it's great because you can sort of transport it around with you which um, if you have got your big home ironing board and you don't want to keep getting that out at home, people start bringing you shirts and things to iron, don't they, if you get the big family iron. This is brilliant because you can, of course, just put it on your table. You can put it on um, your dining room table or wherever you're, you're doing your pressing and your ironing. Maybe even set yourself up a little station. What you could do, because you've got these extra pockets, so if you see this one, it will fold over the front of the desk like that. You can have it set up like this. You could even have your sewing machine on here. You can have your pressing mat, um, your, sorry, cutting mat to the one side. It is from Prim, so it's already pre-shrunk cotton that it's printed on. So if you're using your steam a lot, it's not going to warp all of those different measurements. But what I love is the little pockets on the front. So this one here, I mean, they all can be removed with, they're all on Velcro, but this you can use a little bin. So you could put any of your little scraps or any loose bits of thread, so they're not going all everywhere, pop them into there, and then you can take it to, uh, to put in the bin. Or if, if you have got any little offcuts that you don't want to throw away, keep them for your scraps. So you've got this, you've also then got these extra pockets here, if you want to keep maybe a rotary cutter or any of your marking tools, you've got three pockets plus you've got a pin cushion on the end as well you've got your pin cushion there so it is brilliant and most of the ironing mats that we have have got a solid back whereas this look you can just fold it up shove it away um, in a drawer maybe or in a cupboard in a bag take it to any classes if you're getting the chance to go to any classes or retreat soon fingers crossed it's gonna be ideal for that a lot of the classes that I used to do, we had a communal ironing board and a communal iron, which, of course, in today's world, we're probably all going to have to take all of our own bits and bobs with us, which can be quite cumbersome, couldn't it, if you're taking your ironing board and you're taking your iron and you're taking your big cutting mat and you're taking your machine. Whereas having things like this that are really nice and portable, I think are going to be absolutely, oh, well, absolutely crucial, really, aren't they? £31.99 and it is built to last, it's, it's a, a prim quality, so it's lovely, lovely quality and a great price at £31.99. Be a nice Christmas gift for somebody actually. That would be a really nice Christmas gift. You can see on the front of the uh, the pack how they've used it with the machine on there as well. It is going to 
it might even, now don't quote me on this because it's not designed for that, but because of how cushioned this is, it's going to sort of help if you have a sewing machine that tends to bounce or slide or protect your, uh, your, your surface, your dining room table from, your, from your, um, the, feet, the, bottom of your, the bottom of your sewing machine. So it, and also a bit noise reduction. I find that if I use a mat underneath, it just makes it slightly quieter. So that's a really good idea. And you can see how pockets are used and you've got your, your prim iron, which we got on today's show also. So you saw me using... Do you want me to do that now? So you saw me talking about this earlier. It is brilliant. I own this. I absolutely love it. It's got uh, the, the, the power of your domestic iron, but in a small mini iron. I wouldn't call this a travel iron because it's got all everything that you need, um, like I say, like on your domestic iron. For example, it's got a really lovely long cable, not like little travel irons that have got a flimsy cord. It's got a really, really lovely cord. If I turn it to the front, then you can see you've got steam on, steam off. You've got steam on, steam off. You've got your dial as well. So if depending on what fabrics you're using, you can change the heat. Um, you can change that just really nice and easily with your dial. This part here, you have a, uh, a little jug that comes with it to fill your water up for your steam option. The light, as you see, it will go on depending on, um, well, it's hot at the moment, but um, when you turn it on, it will, it's, it's got the light to indicate when it's ready. You can see it's also got the clip cord, so you can wind your cord all around the handle, clip it into there and store it away nice and easily. It's Plus it's got a really nice ergonomic handle with um, a, a sort of grippy, nice cushioned, cushioned rim. But it is great to be able to open seams because it's got that really nice smooth point at the top. If you're opening seams, I find sometimes with your domestic iron that can be quite difficult to get into those intricate places, whereas this is really, really handy. For pressing things like your half square triangles or pressing any of your binding, for pressing open seams, uh, even, I must say, pressing to, to, to press any of your clothes even, any of your garments, full garments, it is brilliant. We've had so many people every single time uh, asking when this is coming back into stock. It's also got the little feet. Now my previous small iron didn't have any feet um, at all. It was just one that you had to sort of rest on an iron rest, which I don't like doing. I know you can for so long, but um, it is designed to be sort of like an iron rest. You wouldn't leave an iron there. Whereas this, it's great. If you're doing lots of pressing through a project, it's really handy to be able to leave with the, um, the little feet, like little Paul. 39.99, 39.99. So that's your prim mini iron. Oh, whilst we've got the iron on, early bird sold out. Knew that would happen. Quarter past eight. Brilliant. Well done if you managed to get that. If you uh, bought it, have a look on the website and see if there's anything else that you want to add to your order. Is it free P and P? You may as well if you've paid that postage and packaging. Now, let me show you the front of this before I open it. These are your prim ironing rulers, uh, which are great. You've got. Uh, two which are, well, you've got a 10 centimetre by 30 centimetre and then you've also got your 5 centimetre by 15 centimetre and they are reversible. So these are designed to be used in conjunction with your iron. I will show you how they're used. If you're turning up things like sleeves, I know that we're doing sort of quilting show but this is also like our ironing section. So here you've got little lining rulers. I suppose you could maybe do your binding and make sure that you've got everything um, even. Two different sizes. They are both reversible, double-sided as well. All of the instructions are on the ironing rulers. These will come all sort of um, already, how do I describe this? They've got little, is it? It's not a perforated. So I'll show you. It's probably easier if I show you. So we've taken out some of these little, uh, pieces of card, they're little pieces of, of card really. So when you get this home, you can take all of these out, take them all out like that, and you can iron on it. So these are great to mark where you want to, or cut where you're gonna do. Sorry, did I just go too far forward then? Did you see my head? So, here's a bit of fabric. My back of my hair, I haven't done the back of my hair, I've only done the front, sorry. <gasps> Right, so if you're turning up some sleeves or if you're turning up a hem, if you're turning up um, trouser legs, depending on what you're doing, if you want to do it, let's go two centimetres, 
if you want to go two centimetres, you can simply go up to that line. You could mark if you want. If you want to cut, you could do a marking line across and then cut excess if you, if you are turning up quite a way. But you can get that real nice consistent line all the way and you can press onto them. They're heat resistant as well. They are heat resistant. So you're going to get that really nice, crisp, accurate and precise hem nice and easily. If you want to do a double hem, you absolutely can. It's good that you've got the two different sizes, isn't it? So then if I want to go again another two centimetres, I can line that up. It's really clear. The grid is all the way across. So depending on what you're turning up, whether it be, as I say, trouser legs, you've got the two different sizes, whether it be cuffs or sleeves, then this is really handy and it gives you a really, really lovely crisp hem. Even hem, crisp hem, ready to stitch. You've got four different sizes, obviously, because they're double sizes. They're in centimetres. The reverse of it, you have this way. And then this side, you've got, obviously, your markings again in centimetres on both sides or that way. There's instructions on there, plenty of instructions. There's loads of help online. If you go onto Prim's website, or in fact, if you go onto YouTube, type in ironing rulers by Prim, and there's so many demos on there as well uh, of how to use them if you're struggling. But it is quite self-explanatory, really, whether it be cuffs or whether it be trouser legs, um, whether it be for shorts. It's going to be absolutely perfect, isn't it? Just £7.99. So it is a really in integral part uh, of sewing is pressing and ironing. And I think at the start, I thought, oh, can I get away with not ironing as much? But you don't get the professional finish that you want. And when you're spending that time and the money on your patterns and on your gorgeous fabric, you want that lovely end result, especially as people are going to ask you about them, aren't they? So it's, it's definitely worth investing in the right pressing tools to help you um, get those professional results you want. So that's just £7.99 for the two prim ironing rulers. So I haven't told you what's coming up in the rest of today's show. We've got loads going on. As I say, Jules Mayouf is going to be joining me in the next hour. This whole hour is dedicated to quilting tools uh, and, and patchwork. We've got producer Kat with me today and she's going to make her TV debut. Well, she's saying my nails are and my hands are. She wants to be a bit like the Stig on Top Gear that's like remains unknown. Um, so the, uh, yeah, we're going to do a cat's pick coming up this hour as well. At nine o'clock, we've got a sew machine cover, which you saw on step one with me, the machine cover and mat with jewels. At 10 o'clock, we've got cozy up in the autumn hour. Uh, we're going to give you great inspiration, lots of fabrics some complimentary bundles, which we're already selling, some brand new bundles that cat's put together for us and some great autumnal projects in dressmaking, needle felting, quilting, something for everybody in that hour. At 11 o'clock, we've got fabric tray and storage boxes. Have you spotted any around the set? There are loads. I mean, there's so much that you're going to be able to do with the kits. It's so exciting. So stay tuned. That's going to be Jules' show at 11. And then there's a repeat of yesterday's 8 a.m. show at 12 o'clock. If you do want to come and say hello to us, if you've got any questions for Jules or if you've got any questions for me, please get them in. The usual email address is studio at sewingstreet.com, studio at sewingstreet.com. Or, of course, if you want to jump onto Facebook, then it's Sewing Street TV, you can message in. Of course, do you know what I love as well? The fact that yesterday we discovered we could read the YouTube live chat. So good morning, Valerie. Good morning, Sharon. Hello, Claire, who makes things in Solihull. Lovely to see you. Well, I can't see you, don't worry. If you're there in dressing gown, like, oh, oh. Anybody who's watching in the bath or something is like, what? No, anyway, don't worry, I can't see you, but it's lovely to have your company anyway. Um, come and say hello on the face on the uh, YouTube live. It would be great to have your company. Right, should we do some more quilting tools? Let's do some waddings. Waddings, right, I'm going to be brutally honest with you, is I find personally sometimes a bit of a minefield in the fact that 
it is down to personal preference. I can't stand here and tell you, you've got to buy this for your quilt because you might want a polyester one. You might want a wool quilt. You might want a, a different one. I believe this is 80-20. This is your queen size 80-20. When I asked Sally Stevens yesterday what her personal choice is, she says she likes the cotton poly mix because you can put it in the wash. It sews beautifully. It's still really lovely and soft. It's got that cotton content. It's 80% cotton, 20% polyester. Uh, and it still is going to be lovely and warm. It's going to be great for wall hangings. It combines softness and breathability of cotton with the stability and hard, uh, hard wearing nature of polyester. So you can still chuck it in the wash. You can have it as a quilt to wrap yourself up with in the, in the, uh, in the winter or the autumn. It's £44.99. So have a, bit of a think, have a bit of a think about what it is that you're using it for. If you don't necessarily use it all, I mean, this is queen size, so it's a lot of wadding here. Um, don't throw any away because you can always patch pieces together like with your fabrics I know a lot of people have a bit of a wadding stash or for smaller projects it's going to be really useful if you are sending your quilt away to be uh, quilted long arm quilt if you're sending it to a long arm quilter then ask them how much they need around the perimeter generally it's a couple of inches but it depends on what they what they prefer so you always go for slightly larger than the actual um, quilt itself so this is your queen size for 45 Four ninety nine. Got a poly polyester option as well. This is one hundred percent polyester. Uh, for for kids' play mats and quilts like that, that you know you're going to need to chuck in the wash a lot. This is brilliant. It is lighter, obviously. It's slightly lighter weight. So if you're thinking for wall hangings. Well, there's a debate on that one because Sally Ann Harrison, she said to me, I always thought wall hangings, and she said, I like weight in my wall hanging, so it hangs heavier. Um, so she would go for cotton. So this is what I mean. It's completely personal preference. Have a bit of a read up on them uh, on the website. These are, are both beautiful quality from So Simple. They generally say on the front how much to stitch between. So this one, for example, is 10 inches. If you want to do minimal, minimal quilting, you only need to stitch 10 inches apart, which is great. Whereas the cotton, in fact, the cotton one, again, is 10 inches, which is really good. Because some of them are a lot smaller. You have to do a lot smaller, denser quilting which again adds a really lovely feel to it. You can quilt closer um, between, but this will give you a nice sort of lofty, more fluffy feeling quilt, I think. 29.99, and that is again your queen size from So Simple. Morning Lorraine, how are you? Oh, hi Sandra, Sandra's messaged in, oh she's emailed in, she said I'm new to Sewing Street. Oh, welcome to the crazy family. She got the tulip pink yesterday, oh it's amazing love that you'll love it oh this behind me so this is another quilt in fact from the same book did you get the book the Pam and Nicky Lintop book yesterday if you did then I think this is in the the same book me and Kat always get a little bit confused <laughs> with that one but I'm sure it is this one uh, let me move out the way so I can't step any further um, so the barley pops a part of our autumnal show coming up, um, but it's from the Pam and Nicky Lintop book. Uh, it's got that lovely scrappy binding, which we saw yesterday with Sally. Um, the barley pops are a batik jelly roll, again, like your tulip pink ones that you bought. So if you manage to get the early bird this morning, Sandra, definitely get the barley pops to go with, and you can create something like that really easily with the book that you got yesterday. Exciting, very exciting. Thanks for your message, it's lovely to have your company. Stay with us, we've got loads going on today. We've got some really, really brilliant demos. Right, it's time, isn't it? So, talking of um, quilting, when you get to that point, that you've done all of your patchwork, you've got your wadding it, to make your quilt sandwich, you need to baste them together. Now, there are different ways of basting. We'll talk about 505 spray in a minute. I know a lot of people choose to use the micro stitch tool, which is brilliant. It reminds me of like when you, you know, when you go to a shop and you've got your, um, your sort of labels or your tags that are there in all of your clothes, then that will just sort of tack it in place. It's a Hmm? It's called a Kimbledon, Kat's telling me. Hmm? Kimbledon. It's called a Kimbledon. Um, it's called a Kimbledon that they use in the shop. So this is that sort of similar principle that it will just put tiny, tiny little tacks. And when I say tiny, I mean tiny. They are 
extra fine and it's a really small needle so it's not going to pierce massive holes into your fabric. What I love about this is actually, yes, you can use it for basting or without using those big tacks that you've seen before, but you don't need to use pins, you don't need to use glue, you can use it for your hems, you can use it for tailored garments, you can use it to tack your applique in place, and yes, you can use it for basting as well. We've got some refills, but you do get loads of refills already. So, as I say, this was one of Kat's picks. She wants to still remain unknown, so there are hands. She's got lovely nails though. She's got really lovely nails. Uh, I've got to give a shout out to your nail lady who is Abby Nails Bab. Abby Nails Bab on Facebook or Instagram. You can definitely uh, message her because they look lovely. Look at your nails. They're like zebra prints, they look really nice. Very nice. Okay, so why did you choose the micro stitch tool cat? Uh, less fuss. Less fuss. Nice and tight. Nice and tight brilliant. tacks. Yeah. Brilliant. She says it's brilliant. 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 All around brilliant. Okay, so she's going to show us how to load um, your micro stitch tool. So there is a little hole on the one side, a circular hole, and then there's a line on the other, and they correspond the same shape as your refill. So you've got black and you've got white in there. Depending on what colour fabric you're using, I suppose they're going to show up better. So, for example, you've got a darker fabric there, mm -hmm. so the white's going to show up nicely. Now, you just put it in. You don't push it too hard. You can just slot it in, and you'll almost feel that it's in there. Yeah. Now, it's also got that cap, which you've already taken off, so keep hold of that, because it is a very, very sharp needle, yeah. isn't it, with a, a, an extra fine point. So it's not going to pierce your fabric too much. But, so you put it through all three yeah. layers, your fabric, your wadding, and it will go all the way through. Just be careful of what you've got on the other side. Be careful what's there. And then you simply pull that trigger and it will release your tack. Can you see? It's done it really, really quick. Really quick and really easy. And there you go. They are tiny, aren't they? Yeah. They're absolutely teeny weeny, which is brilliant. A really nice and easy way. So then, if you just want to do a few more cats, yeah. you can do it so quick all across your quilt. Then obviously you can do your quilting and then you just snip them out. Yeah. And it's up to you. You don't need to do loads and loads and loads, but snipping them out is quite easy as well. You can just push from the bottom. Push from the bottom. Just lift the head off. Snip the head off. And it hasn't left massive holes in your fabric, has it? Nope. Give it a little press and then it will completely yeah. close up. But it, it, they are just such tiny little holes. Amazing. Thank you ever so much. So that is your micro stitch tool. That's producer cat, everybody. Was that your first time on telly? Yeah. She's been very, very nervous. Very, very nervous. Um, but it is a really, really great tool. It says the smallest tack and smallest needle available. So if you are doing smaller projects as well, then this is going to be really, really handy. We've got some refills if you've already got the Avery Micro Stitch tool. So if you want 1,200 of your black, um, your black fastenings, the black little tacks, then these are the ones to go for. It depends on what fabrics you're using. If you're using a lighter fabric, I'd definitely go for the darker ones because they're going to show up a lot easier. So £4.99 might be worth stocking up whilst you paid your postage and packaging. If you are doing lots of tacking, then this is really, really handy. Or 1,200 of your white tacks. In the pack, you do get a mixture of them. I'm not sure how many you get, but you get loads anyway. But it's just good. If you've paid your postage and packaging already, to just stock up because you're going to obviously at some point need more. Just £4.99. Now, like your rotary cutter, like your scissors, um, of course, one day, it isn't going to be after a project, but your, your needle will get slightly blunt. Um, what's great is that they don't do, you can't sharpen these needles, but you can get the refills. So if you found that your, your, your needle is starting to blunt, or if you're starting to use different fabrics, maybe if you're try trying to do them with a denim or a PU or something that you, you're thinking, right, actually, I'm going to need a, a sharper needle to go through these thicker layers, a real thick quilt maybe, they're £22.99 and you're getting four extras in there. And they are designed to go in conjunction with your Avery Micro Stitch tool.
fantastic. In fact, they're good. I've just looked on the front of the packet here. They're really good if you're doing, you know, if you're doing uh, embellishing. So in a bit, we're going to be doing some embellishing onto our, onto our sewing machine case on our sewing machine cover. So if you're doing nice little decorative crafts like this and you want to just tack some felt in place or little you know little scarves and things and hats on snowman before you hand stitch it in sometimes it's difficult to tack those parts in isn't it if you just want to really quickly just be able to secure them temporarily that's great maybe if you're making a doll and you want to tack the arm in place before you stitch around it it's going to be really quick and easy because sometimes that can be quite fiddly whereas that's amazing. Nice and secure, but also will come out really, really easily. That's your micro stitch tool. We're going to do another way of basting. Um, so many people I know choose 505 spray. Just make sure that you're in a well ventilated area uh, and spray from how far away? Hold 25 to 30 centimetres away from your project. Uh, I always ask, do you spray it onto your fabric or spray it onto your wadding? Um, and a few people have said different things. I think you, you probably spray it onto your wadding. I'm saying it doesn't say it doesn't say which one is is correct, but I would probably spray it onto your wadding. You can use this with tissue paper with applique. You could use this obviously for patchwork. You can use it with denim, for jeans, for felt. You can use it for ribbon. You can use it for um, non. Uh, we, we can use it for stabilizers. You can use it on your dressmaking patterns. You know, sometimes if you've got a tissue paper pattern, dressmaking pattern, or a bag pattern, and you're cutting out your fabric. You're pinning them onto your on, onto your the, the fabric that you're going to be cutting out, and sometimes they just move out of the out of the way, don't they? Especially if you're looking at um, a tissue paper pattern. Whereas if you give it a spray and temporarily stick it down, you can cut out really accurately. Great for applique as well. Really good for applique. Seven pound ninety nine, but perfect for basting any of your quilts. It is a temporary adhesive for seven pounds ninety nine. Back in stock. Um, We've also got rotary cutters. These are the most affordable rotary cutters that we have. Where do you want me, Paul? <laughs> We're both literally like, -da 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 -da. there we go. So that's your Millwood rotary cutter. Um, this is your 45 millimeter blade, which is your standard rotary blade. You can pay $24.99, $29.99, $19.99. Our most popular, I think, is $19.99. This is the most affordable, and this is one that you may have seen on the show quite a lot, actually. It's only uh, $8.99, which is the most affordable. It's still got that safety. It's still got that safety catch, which you can slide forward about. This is John Con Morgan's favourite rotary cutter, actually. He always uses this. You can use this with your stripology. You can use this with any of your creative grid rulers. You'll use this to do a majority of your cutting and you replace it with your standard 45 millimetre blade. It's got a nice soft grip, actually. So this little lever, this will engage the blade and then after every cut, if you just get used to pushing that back, then that will close the blade and be extra safe for you. It's only good, isn't it? Eight pounds and 99 pence. So that's your 45 millimeter blade. You may have seen yesterday's show. If you saw yesterday's show with um, Sally Stevens, we were talking about conquering curves in quilting and using the Fiskars circle cutter. If you're doing smaller circles or if you're doing curves or if you're doing freehand curves, I would certainly use a smaller rotary cutter. I also find these are really, really useful if you're doing foundation paper piecing. £6.99, you can't go wrong. If you are at that point of maybe you use your 45mm blade a lot, uh, you're starting to venture into doing FPP or curved piecing, sometimes I think you will find that a smaller rot rotary cutter is, is really helpful. Um, for £6.99, definitely worth making the most of it. You could even just have this as your FPP one that goes through the paper. Because obviously if you're using um, your 45 mil for all of your fabric, you want to change your blade when you're using it for paper as it will blunt it really quickly. You can still sharpen these, you still replace them with your standard 28 millimeter blade. I've got the 28 millimeter blade and I tell you what, mine was not 6.99. That is such great value. That might be the one of, if, if not the most affordable rotary cutter, 28, well it is. It is still a great quality rotary cutter. Again, it is a big name in the industry. 
don't let the price let you think it's any less quality because it is great quality it's still got that really lovely soft grip it's still got the safety feature of having that uh, lever at the front so once you've finished using it absolutely just swap it over I believe you can use this for left or right handers you just need to swap um, I believe you can I think you can swap it all sort of over to the other side and use it for left handers as well I don't think there's anything blocking you the other side um, might need to have a look into that could you reckon you could on the other side No, I think it's because of the safety catch. You wouldn't be able to use this as a left-hander. It's just a right-handed one. Okay, fantastic. Replacement blades. Now, even though these are so easy, you could use these for your, your millwood. You can use these for your fiskars. You could, as long as they've got that shape in the centre here, you'll be able to use it. I think there's a couple of rotary cutters that might be different shapes, more specialist ones. Whereas these, you can use them with your alpha, you can use them with your millwood, you can use them with your clover. 45 standard millimeter blades, and they come in a nice little pack as well. They come in like a little plastic tub, which is great to be able to store them. And as, especially then afterwards to store your old blades, they're still really sharp, so be careful. Um, they're 45 millimeter rotary blades, and as I said, they're all your standard, it's good to stock up. You don't want to be caught short on a Sunday afternoon with a dud blade, do you? When you're thinking, right, Sunday afternoon, I'm going to start all of my lovely Tula pinks or any of my designer William Morris back quarters, and then it starts slashing your fabric. Don't get me wrong. Of course, you can, um, of course, sharpen your blades, but if you do want to then replace them, then these are going to be really handy to have. Great value for money as well at £8.99. You're getting three of them in the pack. All three for just eight ninety nine. Hello, Glennis. Morning, all. Morning, Glennis. Got a coffee. I know the early bird went really quick. You blink and you miss it. You got your linen spray, brilliant, and you got the ironing rulers. They're great, aren't they? It's not very often that we get them in. Oh, lots of love, Glennis. Have a lovely day as well. How we, how are you? How's the weather where you are today? It's going to be a nice day again. Five oh five. Oh, she puts onto the wadding. Brilliant. Who's that? Sorry. Thanks for the tip, Carol. Carol on YouTube says put your 505 on your wadding. Spray it onto your wadding. Um, good morning, Sue, as well. And then you put your fabric over the top and you can get quilting. And it's just that temporary fold, which is great. So, hello, Dawn. Um, it depends if you're using a ruler. If you know what I mean. So, Dawn, is it Dawn? So, Dawn, I'm not. I'm going to be very careful of our nice new desk. But if you imagine, right, if I'm, I'm right-handed here. Well, I'm not right-handed. I'm actually left-handed, but I do generally cut with my um, my right hand. It's because I was for. Well, I wasn't forced into it. That's horrible. I was a bit scared on my first ever quilting and patchwork class that they just handed me a rotary cutter and I was like, I don't want to tell them I'm left handed, I'm just going to learn with my right hand and now I do. So if you imagine you're cutting like this with your right hand against your ruler, don't get me wrong, if you're doing free hand, you could, but if you're left handed, ah, oh, I suppose if your ruler's this side, yeah, you could, thank you. Little silly moment then. Dude, you're absolutely right. This is why we love this live chat. You're absolutely right. I was thinking, oh, if my ruler's there, as long as you're ruling, you can see your, your markings from both sides, then yeah, use it for both. Well done. Um, okay. This is one of the most popular books. This is one of the most popular books ever. 350 Plus, in fact, actually, those of you that have met Susan Briscoe at any of the trade shows or any of the, uh, you know, the big exhibitions or wherever you've seen her on screen here, Susan Briscoe is an absolute fountain of knowledge when it comes to quilting. She is literally like a walking encyclopedia. She knows so much information that she's, that she's stored. Some people have got... Um, I was watching that Who Wants Me a Millionaire last Friday and the man who was just like blitzing all this information. I thought, how have you done this? It's like Paul. Paul does this brain app um, on his phone and you've got very, very good brain power, haven't you, Paul? 
Some people have like photographic memories and I think Susan Briscoe is one of these people that just absorbs so much inspiration. She's put it all into a book. Um, so there are, I mean, there's too much information for me to go through I, I, in, in the next 15 minutes. I could literally just talk about the book for the next 15 minutes. Choosing equipment, talking about different equipment and having the right tools to make your quilting uh, professional and easy, giving you um, more comfort. Your sewing machine, talking about different feet, talking about different needle plates even, different quilting gadgets. So uh, just separating the essentials from the gadgets Choosing and prepare, preparing fabrics, special fabrics, working with more difficult fabrics, dyeing your own fabrics, preparing and storing your fabrics, aging your fabrics with a, a tea bag or tie dyeing, shade effects. She goes into such depth about everything. Um, how about printing your own fabrics? It's just amazing, isn't it? Using photographs to incorporate into quilts. Colour confidence, this is a big section that we were talking about um, yesterday actually, having the colour wheel and, uh, and trying to put together fabrics from your stash and talking about value of prints, tones, tints, intensity, shades, temperature, monochrome colour schemes, neutrals, hue, all different points when you are picking out fabrics to see whether they work together. Obviously some people can just look at them and just know without even thinking all of those different points, but if you are more like me, I struggle sometimes to put colours together and I think, does that work, does it? It's good to go through the science. So, I mean, this is still just all going through um, your fabrics and picking patterns. Whereas this, it, I mean, it goes through every element. There's no point me um, sort of going through page by page, but quilting inspirations, templates, patchwork, different types of patchwork, string patchwork, flying geese variations, puzzles, freehand curves, English paper piecing, oh let me see with the freehand curves, inset circles, curved seams, we went through that yesterday, you've got a section on that here, you've got hand sewing, English paper piecing, oh I'm not sure where it is now, inset sewing, Y seams, you've got um, portable patchwork, hand sewing, here we go, we know that she is a lover of Japanese techniques like sashko, that's the Japanese folding technique. You have got sashko in here as well. Applique, embellishing, freezer paper applique, needle turn and reverse applique, Hawaiian applique, bias, uh, bias strips or bias binding, embellishment, crazy patchwork. Big section on waddings. So I said, oh, it's a bit of a minefield sometimes of picking what wadding do you want for what project, whereas here it's broken down. Choosing your wadding, wadding sizes, weights and thicknesses, fibre content, different colours, shrinkage, cheaper wadding, hand and, and, and machine, uh, sorry, machine and hand wadding, which is great, isn't it? What I love about this book, if I carry on through, it'll talk to you about quilting, long on quilting, quilt as you go, sash go, different techniques of quilting, like hand quilting, trapunto. Um, at the end, it'll go through all of the ways of finishing your quilts with all your binding, your mitre corners, I love this. I love the fact that it then talks about labelling your quilt, which is really important. Whether you're gifting it or not, I think it's good to see your progression, isn't it? If you're starting out, especially this year, it can be like your lockdown quilt. Any finished, any finished projects during 2020, you've got to name and date them. Um, and you never know, they could be passed through generations of your family. And then... She even goes into, if you get into that next level, you've gone from be beginner at the start of the book, just finding out what you need and your essentials and learning all the different techniques, to why not join some groups or why not um, make a joint quilt? Why not enter a show or exhibition or competition? I've never seen a book before that goes through in depth like this, entering a competitive show handling it and, uh, and collecting it and, and making a hanging sleeve and all things like this. Never seen one that goes into so much depth about the care and the storage of your quilts as well as it does here. So it's brilliant, isn't it? All the maths worked out for you. This is great. How many of us only work in inches or how many of us only work in centimetres? Any dressmakers like Adele, she came in um, the other day and she said, I don't think I can use this ruler because it's all inches. I don't know inches at all. Whereas this has got that chart there for you. Useful addresses. I mean, it's so cool. There's loads of info for £12.99. It's crazy. Price is wrong, surely. That's so good value. This, for how many tips you've got in here, it's not even... 
where you've got 350 tips and techniques plus, doesn't stop. I think there's loads. What do you mean? 404, 405. Let me just check. See, these are all great tips as well. Let's go 407. Just to be cons... Pardon? Three pence a tip. Uh, we've got great knowledge in here. I mean, surely it costs more to print this book. It's a good weighty book. £12.99, that is a lot for your money, isn't it? Right, we are going to plough through some more products because we're running out of time. The metallic threads, absolutely. Christmas is fast approaching us, isn't it? We've talked a lot about metallic threads recently. There's so many projects where I've thought, oh, do you know this Starry Starry Night, um, uh, Lewis and Irene fabric, the glow in the dark one. This would be beautiful with that. You've got all of these amazing metallic threads for decorative stitching. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't use this for my simple piecing. This is decorative. This is beautiful. So, you've got your silver, your bronzy gold, this one, I mean, look at that. That emerald, emerald green, but it's still got like um, a sea foamy blue in there. This one's got pinks and a purple. Look at that. This one, your purples are amazing. Your gold, great for Christmas mates. And your pinks, £9.99. Seven 50 metre um, threads, which are, are amazing. Yeah, I mean, these are really, really beautiful, aren't they? 50 metres on each spool. Hundred, uh, uh, I think it's 10%, 70% polyester, 30%. Oh, no, sorry, 70% polymead. Is that right? And 30% um, polyester. Um, but they're great, aren't they? They're really, really lovely. Metallic threads from Guterman. £9.99. The only things that I would recommend is getting yourself a metallic needle if you haven't got one already. Use a metallic needle on your machine. How lovely would that be on a, an old denim jacket that you just want to give a new lease of life, just even stitching round the collar or on the pocket? You think in a pillowcase or Christmas stockings, Christmas baubles, Christmas table runners, I'm thinking Christmas. But even just any sparkly project you want to bring a bit of a bling, just £9.99. They're great, aren't they? Right, value pack, brilliant value for money. We've got another thread pack to bring you. Another value pack. All 20, this time with variegated and with your solid top stitching threads. Now these are your 70 weight, which is your heavier cotton. Uh, so if you ever you see a yellow spool like this, then it's 70 weight. So you get 70 meters on each spool, it is a, a heavier weight thread. But these are beautiful. That one's like a fruit salad. <laughs> this one's Paul's favourite. I love that one though, that fruit salad colour. You've got your yellow, lemon and white. Fruit salad, I'm calling that one. Your reds, your really cool, almost 80s vibe, isn't it? Neon colours. You've got your um, purples and blues, your lovely greens and blues. Your blue and white, they're lovely for Christmas. Navy blues. Paul's favourite with the reds and yellows and blues. The greys. And then you've also got all of these colours. Now that one's great if you're doing any working with any denim. If you want some real decorative top stitching, I wouldn't use this in your bobbin or for piecing. I'd use this solely for for your top stitching, and it looks great. Or in fact, actually, not just solely for top stitching, but you could use it for applique. You could use it with any of your decorative stitches on your machine. If you want something to really, really stand out, as I say, it's a heavier weight thread. Um, it is going to be great for any decorative stitching, isn't it? Even on a strap, more stitches you sort of put on, it is going to strengthen it. So you can see the strap on this bag looks great, doesn't it, with all those decorative stitching or across cushions or on, on little um, jars, decorative jars. But for dressmakers, oh, this is gorgeous. I love top stitching. 
on garments it looks great on bag making it looks brilliant the value for money on this is fantastic as well at 44.99 to get all of these lovely variegated threads going to be fab 20 70 meter threads from Guterman for 44.99 that's brilliant we do have them individually as well this one is N O Z W 19. This is the one that still features Paul's favourite, and it features that lovely Ice Queen colours, the Ice Queen whites and blues. Paul's favourite colours, the greys, the greens, and then all of your lovely neutral. Again, 70 weight top stitch threads, £22.99. And 99 pence. The others are on the website. Have a look underneath us. Um, we've got the other bright ones. I'll just quickly show you, but you can get them on the website. Those two are underneath us on the web. I had a message come in from Pam. Hi, Pam. Morning, Vicky. Loving the show. Bit of a gadget freak. With all things that can help you with crafting, I love all the gadgets. Got the tacking gun, found it very, very helpful for holding bag pieces together before quilting them. That's a good idea. Really easy to remove too, she said. Oh yeah, did everyone love cat's nails? They look amazing, don't they? She does pay about £40 a week to have her nails done. Oh, she said, don't tell my boyfriend that, he'll be watching. How, how often do you get them done? Once a month. Oh, she said, they last me about a month. They last me a month. And they're all her own length. They've grew, she's grew them herself. She's very proud of them. Um, have a look for those various, uh, the variegated threads on the website. Hello, Glenis. Glenis has said, good morning. She said, it's a fabulous book. The Susan Briscoe book. She says, there's loads of tips in there. It's a brilliant book. Re recommends it to everybody. In the next hour, Jules is eagerly awaiting in the wings. She's already snuck into the studio. And we've got an amazing sewing machine cover, which is so pretty with a great back quarter pack as well. Brilliant price point. So do not go anywhere. We're back with Jules right after this. Did you know that if you shop with Sewing Street, you're only going to pay one lot of postage all day? That's one payment of £3.95, no matter what you're buying. And you can check out as many times as you like without having to pay another delivery charge. So shop online at www.sewingstreet.com or you can order via our call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. <laughs> My favourite piece of kit with the sewing is the sewing with that. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping.
Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business. It was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike. And they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Welcome back, welcome back. We've got a gorgeous project. What, something that we all need, actually. Um, I think it's a lovely project that those of you that are maybe just investing in a sewing machine, if you've not got, or if you've just got a new sewing machine, potentially, the first project I'd do is to make a nice sewing machine cover to go with. How lovely is this? It's really lovely to see all these Hessians being used as well. We've often had the fat quarters and I always thought, oh, what can I use? What can I make them with? So it's lovely to see this applique design. But how nice is that? Especially leading in towards autumn, nice autumnal colours and lots of room to personalise and embellish it how you wish. So we've put together some bundles and it all comes from one of our gorgeous Debbie Shaw books. Um, without being biased, she is the best. She really, really is. And it, it, she is, of course, a, an award-winning author. She's won awards for the books that she writes. This is uh, teamed up with Love to Sew and she's done a book that's dedicated to all sewing room accessories, which is fantastic. So obviously you've got the sewing machine cover in here, but there's also so many more projects. She always starts her books by giving you some great tips and techniques and basic techniques that you'll see throughout the book and then go into projects, which are always very, very clear with text and photographs making lovely little pin cushions, but a bit different to your ordinary pin cushions. Little pockets to keep your buttons and your ribbon stash in. Sewing case to keep um, look, all of your, 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 your skeins and your pins and your buttons and little snips and things, which is lovely. This is what we're making today. This is your machine cover and also a mat as well, which you can make at home. There's a mat option as well. Of, um, of having like a slip producing mat, which is great. Your table caddy, you've got um, a mat carrier if you're getting a chance to go and sew on the move, maybe at relatives' houses or if your fingers crossed your workshops and, uh, and courses and things that are starting back up soon, that would be great, or any of your sewing groups. Uh, sewing circles, see that looks lovely, doesn't it? Just to keep, again, all of your little bits and bobs in. Tool roll, that could, that could double up there once you know how to do it. You could use that as like a makeup roll or to keep, if you're an artist, to keep all your paint brushes or if you do crochet, to keep all your crochet hooks in. 
It's a lovely roll. This is great. A chair storage. I've never seen those before. Chair storage. Seam press. Make your own seam press or like ironing ham. A little ironing station, we were talking about how important pressing is earlier on. So a little um, ironing press. Another sewing machine cover, a different way of doing it. Pin and pattern pouch. Oh, I flipped through, but there's loads and loads in there. More carry cases. Again, they'd be nice little vanity cases. Notebook covers and all sorts. So you've got plenty of projects in there. And look at the price. For one pattern, surely, $7.99 would be brilliant. You're getting 15 15 project, pence per project, less than a pound a project. Can't work out the maths, but it is silly low. £7.99. We've got bundles as well put together. The one that you've seen the, uh, the sewing machine uh, cover already made from was this bundle, which is gorgeous. I love that. And I love the fact that Jules has sort of incorporated her own style with the very obvious shape on the front, the lace, the little birds on the rooftops, her free motion. And I mean, it's up to you how much embellishing and how far you want to go. Of course, we're still sharing our website with our sister channel, Jewelry Maker. So if you want to add some little schwoskies or beads and bits and bobs, seed beads and things like that, then this is going to be a great chance to really personalise. So you'll get it half a metre of your vanilla cream ivory all of these fabrics as well so you've got four fat quarters two of your hessians one of your which I think is a jute oh sorry one of your hessians two of these lovely naturals and then also I think that one's called a jute um, plus then you're getting half a metre sorry of cream half a metre of cream in there, uh, plus your fat quarters for eleven ninety nine. And whether you're choosing to make this today or whether you want to have a, a go with something else in the, in the book, then brilliant little bundle. That's going to be great for loads of projects in there. We've also got the pink one, which is the one that Jules is going to be working with, half a metre of your lovely light pink, plus then you're getting all of your fat quarters, which are your red floral, you've got your red spot, you're getting your red uh, stripe. In fact, you're getting five in here. Your red, which looks like a linen-y texture, and then another uh, broader stripe, $17.99. So you get five fat quarters in this one, plus your half meter of pink. And that's what you're going to need for the whole of the machine cover. Um, and it will have a, patched, a patchwork inside, which is lovely as well. Plus, have you noticed the ribbons on the side Jules has actually used the ribbon from your fat quarters. Nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes to waste. I love that. So that's your pink option. Uh, then we've also got red and natural. So again, this is half a metre of your solid fabric. And then four fat quarters. This is like a lovely snowflake. You've got your gingham, your hearts, and your hessian, which I absolutely love for 15.99 and a half a meter of vanilla. Your whole kit for just 15 pounds and 99 pence. That's great value for money, isn't it? Uh, we've also got some panels, which I tell you what, the value for money in our panels is absolutely fantastic, as you'll see as well at 11 o'clock. Um, this one is ZSUU60. They are all printed onto one panel, different prints, and all big fat quarters because normally obviously your quilting weight fabric the width of it is 44 inches or 112 centimeters if I'm not mistaken 112 whereas this is 140 wide it's 140 wide so it means that your fat quarters are even bigger than normal extra big fat quarters um, and for complementing fat quarters so you're getting your floral your two florals then this one I love, it's almost like um, a quilted, free motion quilted sort of stitches it looks like to me. So you've got your lighter floral, with this lovely pale blue with a, a white flower and leaves and lovely detail. Then you've got the deeper blue with your floral. Then this one which I say is a bit like nice stitches and then you've got your spot. All four fat quarters uh, at a brilliant price of 19.99. Brilliant, brilliant price point. As I say, you've got loads of fabric there, and that would look really nice. But loads of the projects again in the book. Okay, 
I will fold this up in a moment. FXUU02 is this one, which is called Misty Blues. So, you have the floral and the gingham. Floral and the gingham. And then if I flip it over, you've got the spot and the ditzy floral print as well. They are big, they're 70 centimetres by 50, so four coordinating large fat quarters for £19.99. Okay, we've also got two others before we just uh, before we jump over to Jules. M-A-U-U-68, sorry. Thank you. Is this one? Oh, this is lovely. This is called Fruit Punch. This is really fun. So this is one of your fat quarters. Your floral with your nice pink and yellow spots. You've got this one, which is your yellow vine design. And then you've also got these two prints. Oh, they are nice. £19.99. and pence. That's probably the clearest way of showing you, isn't it? All four fat quarters. Remember, they're all the same size as the other ones before, but just these different prints. It's good to open them out so you can see how big they are. But just then, so it saves a bit of time of me folding badly. Um, I'll show you the next one. It's SYUU83, please. That's this one. This is really nice. It's almost like your... Um, Retro, quite 70s vibe, really, really cool. We like that one a lot. And then you also have your vine in blue. And then you're ready for the reveal. Oh, oh, plus these two fat quarters. Your blue and pink floral and your yellow and pink floral. That's going to look lovely as well, isn't it? It's going to be really nice and bright. Uh, if you do want to add a bit of stability. You want to protect your sewing machine, of course. We've got the fusible fleece, which is your H640. You get a metre piece. Is one piece enough, Jules? Yeah. So one piece will be enough if you just want one. One metre is going to be plenty for your sewing machine. If you want to add another one, maybe to make a matching mat, absolutely multi-buy. So the one side of it you can feel has got like a, a lovely fleecy side. And then the reverse is the glue. You can feel the difference, it's like a rougher side with lots of little glue dots. Just be careful when you're pressing on it. I suppose when you're pressing, you can press from the fabric side or just put a pressing cloth over the top because that is so lovely and fluffy, you wouldn't want to lose that. Just £9.99. It is an official Visaline product and if you have a look on their website, there's loads of different instructions on there. But they are printed on the side of H640 on the salvage just telling you about what heat to use and how long to press it for. But we will ask Jules all these questions. Um, also, just finally, yes, I know that Jules has used the really, really pretty ribbon from the Fat Quarters, but if you want to do an extra embellishing, we think these will go really, really nicely with, in fact, all of the Fat Quarters, whether it be any of the kits or whether it be any of our panels. You've got your really lovely gingham ribbon. How pretty is that? £3.99. I stocked up to the max on ribbon earlier this year. I thought, right, I love them for, for decorating and for, 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 for um, applique work like this. It looks really, really pretty. But also, just to have in your wrapping cupboard, it's so handy to have ribbon. Nice ribbons like this one, they're so affordable as well. You're getting a whole metre there for just £3.99. So, Shereel of Hello. Hello, hello, Jules. <laughs> How are you today? Yeah. Thank you. What's yes. things on you home? I know. Ooh, so much space. It is everywhere. Great, yeah, yeah, no, it? it's really good. Yeah, really good. I'm very pleased that you've moved into a new home. I know. <laughs> you can actually put things and you know that they're going to be there. <laughs> well, well, you say that. You do say that. Well, <laughs> so, always optimistic. <laughs> two beautiful projects. I mean, really nice, yeah. And great projects that sort of go a long way, especially at 11 o'clock. The, the <laughs> storage pots. We'll Tell talk me about, about your later. printed panels later. Oof. Yes. They're brilliant, aren't they? In fact, these yeah. printed panels really do go a long way. And the weight of it is really good weight. It, quilting cotton, definitely good, yeah. good weight, yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. So the machine cover, 
Can I do this for any machine that I have at home, any size machine? You can. Um, you just take the measurements from yourself, really. Oh, that's good. Uh, in the book, Debbie says that she uses her machine, and hers measured 19 by 29, I think. Uh, when I measured mine, it was 19 and a half by 30. So you kind of... the. Uh, Elna 550, it yeah. would fit nicely. Maybe if you've got one of the more advanced machines, maybe the 680, you might need to go a little bit wider, but probably okay. the flap over is about the same. And because you've got the ribbons as well, I suppose that yeah, gives you extra. Yeah, it accommodates the width, yeah. Um, but yeah, you, all you need to do is just um, have a little look before you start sewing, and me before you start cutting actually, and measure your machine, just to kind of go over from front to back and that'll be your length and then your width, obviously. If you want a little bit either side, just in case things get pushed against it, then that might be a good idea. Uh, but yeah, it's very easy to measure, so you don't have to worry. Brilliant, and there's lots of techniques on here, aren't there? The quilting, yeah. applique, you've done some free motion on here. Yeah, it's, it was really nice, because I've actually looked at some of the uh, stitches that I've got on my machine, uh, and taken those and used those, rather than just do ordinary satin stitch, I've done like the one on the roofs is like a feather stitch, oh, the one really? along is like a path kind of thing. So you could just go to town and play with your machine really. And the top bit is a little bit of free motion, but if you are a bit unsure about free motion, don't worry. You'll find something on your machine to give you a stitch to do that anyway. And Absolutely. you could, uh, as long as you take your time, you could manage to manoeuvre the material to do it. So don't be put off if you think, oh, I've never done free motion or anything like that. And you don't want to step into that. You can use all the decorative um, machine stitches. Fantastic. So yeah, it's, it's a lovely book. I mean, great yeah. value for money. And there's so yeah. much well, in there. I had it before to do the tool roll. Oh, okay. So, and it, that was very easy to do, very straightforward to do. So, yeah, you'll get so much worth out of that book. There's lots of different projects in there. So, yeah, yeah go so for it. Nice and I was actually nice. having a look to see how much I got left um, of the material that I used. And looking in the back, you know, the sewing book cover? Yeah, the, yeah, um, book similar cover. sort of idea. You've got a bit of a plique kind of stuff going on. You could practice on that first if you wanted to. Cut out all your main cover and then just use the offcuts to do the sewing book cover. Oh, good idea, good idea. Yeah. So, you're working with a pink bundle. I am. What do we do first? So, first thing is obviously measure your machine. Um, right. As I say, mine was uh, 19 and a half by 30. Uh, and when I cut it, so if you take your half uh, meter, uh, this is going to be your main kind of fabric that you, you're uh, putting things onto. Um, just cut it so that if you fold it in half and square off the edges and make that 15, okay. obviously that will then be your 30 or whatever your half measurement yeah. is. It's just easier to do it that way and then you know you've got it even. I'm with you. Um, hidden underneath, I've got my H640, which I've started to press on. But I just wanted to show you how straightforward it is, actually, to, to press it on. You can feel the difference, can't you, with the glue you side? You can, definitely. Right. On the gluey side, it is um, quite... You can hear it's sort of quite rough. And on the other side, it's more spongy. Mm -hmm. um, and just medium heat, really. And you're not... Um, although you're pressing it, you're not kind of um, wafting across like a normal line. You're kind of going a bit slower just okay. to make sure that you're melting the glue, you're giving it a chance. I love this. Oh, it's great. It's so cute. It? Yeah, so cute. It's um, actually a lot more powerful than you think, though. It's, it is. It's got a really good um, heat on it. Yeah. Um, so I've got this on sort of medium heat now. And you can test to see whether, I mean, that's stuck apart from right in the corner, which, you know, that's just me in corners. Um, so give that a good old press down. Now, you cut two uh, pieces. So you'll cut the plain one for the front mm -hmm. and what I've done is um, I've cut out all of my other pieces which uh, Debbie explains in the book how many of each thing I'll go through that in a second and then once I've cut everything else I've cut the back out of strips so I'll just show you those as well right so we've got a patched a patch back. Well, I've, I've just think very simply very straightforward oh lovely just lines of each to match the length and the width on there but you could if you wanted to do this um what you could do is maybe cut that into three and then twist them around and get a bit more patchwork entirely up to you that's what i love about these projects you have got the poetic license to do kind of different things if you want to absolutely and i'm thinking right because of this one you've got five fat quarters on these two we've got four so i'm thinking you might struggle to do the patch um back with the four fat quarters do you think um you might just about i would get your binding out first and just see how much more you've got 
Uh, but you can always top it up with one of the main kind of basic fabrics if Absolutely, you Absolutely, yeah, to. if you want yeah. to have a look. Um, the red one, just so you know, has got a vanilla a vanilla half metre. So that's £3.49 on the website if you type in 100% vanilla. If you do just want to add another half metre, you could just do it all completely solid then, like you have in here. Yeah. Or this one is cream. In fact, if you've got the early bird, you could just use part of that and you can patch it. You'll still have plenty of fabric left over then. Or Osnaberg or Calico or something from your stash. Um, it'll go really nice with all these natural Yeah, textures. absolutely. It makes it look a bit more rustic kind yeah, of thing, absolutely. doesn't it? So the next thing that you want to do is just drape it over your machine and check where your oh, excuse me where your frontage is going to be, as it were. Yeah. Um, because that's going to be your applique area. So if you just, as I say, when I cut mine, I cut it in half. Uh, I folded the material in half to cut. Uh, so I've got that line there. So I can see that that's my very top. If you know, if I go over that, I've gone a bit too far. Uh, and then I've got about an inch or and a half at the bottom. So that's my kind of picture area. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, next thing you want to do is to cut out all of your um, scenery, really. And although we've done two hills and three houses, you can play around with that anyway. I kept to what was in the book, just so you can see what it's like. Um, you could use your circle cutter if you wanted to. We had um, that on yesterday's show. Yeah, so you could use that. Um, if you haven't got that, if you're very new to sewing and you just got your basic tools at the minute, then you can equally as well just um, get a little piece of, like mark along here, this is 12 inches, so your centre point would be at 6 inches, so go 6 inches in to your material that you're going to cut it out of. Have a little piece of string and do a circle. Yeah, good idea. Very straightforward. Or a plate or, or something. Or a plate or something yeah. like that. Um, does Debbie give you the measurements in the book? Yes, yeah, indeed. So this is a 12 inch half circle, semicircle, and then your other fabric is an 8 inch semicircle. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all of the um, dimensions are given to you. Uh, and then you just kind of lay it down and play around with it, really. I, for the houses, I've pre-prepared uh, and put some bond web, web on the back. You don't have to. If you want to use your 505 spray, which... Yeah, um, it's there. It's behind you. You did behind, behind you. Behind it's you. behind it's you. It's nearly that season. Five, yeah. <laughs> oh, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 505 spray. Oh, what about you, um, micro stitch tool? Micro stitch tool. Yeah, absolutely. Because all you want to do is secure it down so that when you're stitching around it, you, you're not moving it around all the time. And also um, gives you a bit of an idea of what it's going to look like. 505 is good because press. it's repositional, isn't it? Yeah. So I'll just have a quick squirt on there. I don't want to take it too much to the top because I want to tuck my house behind it. So I'm going to have that one there. Are you okay to see that? Yeah. Absolutely, perfect. Um, and then I wanted a, a little flowery hill. So you've got all of these different this fabrics. This is lovely to personalise yeah. it, it and make it to, to, you know, whatever you want, your own little picture. Yeah. Um, and depending on how far across, obviously that will be your difference in the hills. So we'll kind of go about there. You can do whatever you want, really. Um, to decorate it, um, if you've got scraps of lace or bits of ribbon, um, oh, just nice. to do the fence posts, as we were kind of calling this. them. I love this. It's a bit of lace, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you just what you would do then is uh, this, this is why I didn't want to um, go all the way over it. Just want to tuck that underneath there, uh, and we'll. You can either pin it, glue it, whatever you want to do with it to take it around. But that's the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch that around. Before I do that, I want to place my houses on because I don't want to stitch over their front drive. <laughs> so I've got um, the house pieces, I can't quite remember, I think they're three by four. And then the piece in between, which is the window, is two by two. Yeah. Your triangles are three and a half inch uh, equilateral, I think. But you can use your cutting mat to get a 60 degree line on there and cut out your triangles. So use the bits and bobs that you've already got. Absolutely. And they're, they're very straightforward. And then it's literally just deciding what you want your house to look like, really. Whether you want it to have a stripy roof or... You could even you want put, it to be. Yeah, you could <laughs> even put like little people and windows. You could, yeah. And, 
You can get really creative with these. You can do as much or as little as you want. I mean, you don't need to do three houses. No. Could you? you could put house numbers on it. Yeah. Or you could do all sorts. kind of mimic what your house might look like and all that sort of thing. So, you know, I, you might not want two of the same things together. Um, I didn't want to put stripes in the windows, but you could put stripes in the windows and, you know, all sorts of stuff. You can choose what you want to do. Now, these have all got Bonder Web on them, so I'm going to um, just seal those in place first of all. Have you peeled all. off the back? Of I haven't just yet. I'm just placing them play. down. First. Sorry. <laughs> Having a play. Should be playing. You are <laughs> supposed to be can. working. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'll um, just peel the back off. This isn't that. really work, is it? We're so lucky. Shh. <laughs> Don't tell my children. I know. No, I've got a very hard day today. Same, hard. I keep saying this to my husband. <laughs> So, sorry, this is a bit like watching paint dry, isn't it, really? Oh, no, yeah. not at all. This it's, will be what you're it's doing at home. actually quite peeling. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, that was my eye. <laughs> Oops. Didn't go far enough. Um, so, you can, um, if you wanted to, uh, and use something that's um, repositionable again, you, you could do, it's, it's not a problem. Bonder Web's available on the website though, we do have Bonder Web. What Are you going to put the, the, roo the roofs under the houses or do you put them on the top? Um, I think I'm going to put it on the top, actually. Okay. Did I do it on there? Yeah. Um, I, I think you did, yeah. Top. How yeah. is the Hessian to work with? So, um, I was going to say, from the point of view of Bonder, Bonder Web in Hessian, I wouldn't. Okay. I would definitely use a, a 505 on that because it's an open weave and it doesn't stick as well. Right. Um, you can get around it, but it, you know, it depends how quick you want to sew afterwards, if you know what it I mean. It looks great though, doesn't it? I must say, I love the Hessian option. I think yeah. this is so nice, adds lovely texture. I haven't worked with Hessian for a long time and I thought, oh, do you know what? I've forgotten how it can be used, how yeah. versatile it can be. Right, nearly there. And then you've got three little chimneys as well, and they're an inch by half an inch. Oh, I love this colourway coming together. If I'm being brutally honest, when I first saw it, I thought, I'm not Ooh. sure about the pink with the red. <laughs> How many patterns have we got? <laughs> it works really, really well, doesn't yeah, it? And having yeah. all the different stripes and the florals, it looks really nice when it's all coming together. <laughs> Especially, like you say, embellishing with buttons that you might have at home, or ribbons and lace. Yeah. It's a and really good idea. And you, um, you could probably... Um, do something else as well, you know, put some birds in the sky and, you know, all those sorts of things, depending on how you want it to be. And um, if your sewing room isn't pink and it's more those hessian colours, then you could add it up. If you've got something else in your room, say like a yellow or what it might, or whatever it might be, you can actually add those colours in yeah. as well. That's yeah, yellow, absolutely. That would be really nice. Yeah, because you could do little flowers, couldn't you? You could yeah. do some hand embroidery flowers on there, yeah. little French knots. Little windows you can do. Um, I've seen some, and I think we had them on the website. I know we had some bees because I bought some bees. Oh, but there were some little little buttons, yeah, with um, animals on them. Yeah. And they, they would be really nice in the field. Yeah, we had little So flowers. they're not getting mistaken. We had ladybirds and bees. We yeah. had we had like little flower pots, didn't we? We had footballs and aeroplanes and all sorts you could put, couldn't you? Or birds. Yeah, you could put yeah, you could put aeroplanes on. So make sure that you lay all this out. You've done this automatically without um, thinking, but you lay it all out on yeah. your pressing mat so that then you're not having to yeah. transfer it all over again. Because after that you, you can just go to town on sewing your stuff on. Um, wonky chimney, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any wiggle room with the Bonder web? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. You could peel it. Yeah, you could. But um, I think try and get it down, uh, you know, fairly quickly because um, you want to get onto the sewing bit. Which I don't know if I've got me. Are you on? on? Yeah, I'm, I'm on. Oh no, I'm not. I switched off. Okay, you're wrong. What a clever girl I am. I know. <laughs> I was going to say that, it's very organised of you to oh. turn it on straight away. I'm obviously doing the health and safety. I've obviously had some uh, little bird on my shoulder telling me. Turn the iron off straight away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to now and I'll burn the place down. Right, okay. So I haven't um, bonded webbed the circles. They're a bit too big. So we've used the 505 on that. And I think what I'll do first of all, as I say, is get the... Um, lace down so that will just take the tops of the circles down so I'm going to do 
bit of that. You might just pin that. Gonna pin it. Yeah. Had um. Oh, what's sorry? Hi, Bernie. Bernie's post is on the fan page. Made me smile this morning watching Sewing Street. Oh, look! This is my first make two years ago oh, when I started my sewing journey, Bernie. And that's on the uh, Sewing Street fan page. That's brilliant, Bernie. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. That's so good. Like you say, it's a, a first project. You're learning lots of skills here, aren't yeah. you? And using lots of different techniques, using your applique. If you want to do a bit of, you know, decorative stitching on your machine, if you've got maybe your first sewing machine, it's not very often that you use all those decorative stitches. No. But, well, it's, it's a really op a good opportunity to have a look and try all the different Play stitches around, out. Yeah. yeah. And I found um, a really nice, uh, it's sort of like a, um, a fly stitch. Um, oh, yeah. which I used on one of those and I thought oh I haven't used that before let's use that because I know they say you know when you um, first get a sewing machine uh, to um, do all your stitches practice them all and but you know what if you haven't got a project to go to then you um, you yeah. might not want to do that really yeah. you might just um, think well that's a bit of a yeah. long-winded project that I don't really need to do that but this gives you an incentive to do it doesn't it so absolutely so how are you going to stitch on this lace because this would um, scare me as a beginner so I'm going to use a zigzag or a satin stitch whichever you've got on your machine um, I'm just going to line it up so that um, so I know that the the machine uh, the uh, material underneath is a raw edge and I don't really want that peeling all back especially when I had the hessian so I did quite a close uh, zigzag, which turned into a satin stitch in the end. Yeah. Um, so I would, that was what I would recommend to do, um, just to stitch the lace around. So let's, on here it's six. And I'll see how wide we've got this. That's it could have it. a bit of a play, isn't it? So there we go. So I've got it striding between the material and the lace just to hold it in place and I've roughly pinned that so just to anchor it and you can curve it around just take it steady she says because she never does so just go around that corner I can already see that I've made up some lace there which is good because I can use it on the other side Wendy said it's lovely watching the demo. Oh, bless you. Thank you, Wendy. The, machi the machine cover this morning. It's very restful. Nice, <laughs> nice early morning TV. Try and be quite relaxed. <laughs> We've been up hours and hours and hours. This isn't morning for us. What time did you have to get up this morning? Uh, half of three. Half of three. Yeah. Do you know, I did think of you this morning because <laughs> I woke up and looked at the time and thought, oh, it's half three. I've got a couple of hours. Oh, thought, no, don't. Jules That's will be mean. getting up now. Oh, no. <laughs> It You'll was be pitch going black there. this morning. It's got so dark all of a sudden. I think this autumn weather is well and truly kicking yeah, in. Yeah, most definitely. And it started to rain a little bit. And I went, no, it's not supposed to be raining today. And then I thought, well, it actually isn't really much of today, today yet. Today, yeah, no. <laughs> no, it's going to be nice and sunny today, isn't it? <laughs> right, OK, nearly round the corner. And so if you want to change the lace to the, uh, for the other one, you can do. It's entirely your call, really. Um, We've all got so. a bit of a stash, haven't we? Or if you, you know, I find on some um, clothes that don't fit me anymore or something and they've got little trims, I'll always... Yeah, recycling recycle stuff, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I love to recycle things. Or sometimes I've even bought things in the past from um, a charity shop or something that I thought, oh, that's a nice lace on you there. You bought it just nice, for that, yeah. Nice bits, yeah. absolutely. So we'll go again. Shall we go freestyly? Go freestyly. Yeah. Well... Without pinning. Without pinning. Ooh. Oh, it's all right. That's my nervous voice. <laughs> How bad can it get? Don't tempt fate. You don't need your <laughs> walking foot on, though, do you? No. I mean, you're going through your H640. It's, 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 it's quite... It's fine, uh, you know. Um, um, I, I only really put walking, my walking foot on if I've got loads of fabric going through and or if I've got a quilt that I'm doing. Oh, could I quilt this before I put my applique pieces on? Once you've done like your 
I suppose now you haven't got your backing on yet, have you? Your backing no. goes on after your PK. And what you can do, um, you can put stabiliser underneath. I haven't. Okay. On that one, I did because I got the Hessian. Um, right. And I just, because I hadn't sewed with it for a while, I just wasn't that sure about it. Um, but I did put a stabiliser underneath for that one. Um, the only thing, if you're going without a stabiliser, is just to make sure at the end of everything, because obviously you've got your um, H640 underneath, just to make sure that it's, it's not shed into your bobbin race. Right. Um, Have a bit of a clean if you Yeah, machine. I would do. But I've used H640 before without stabiliser on it, and it's been, you know, perfectly fine. Yeah, absolutely. You, you get to know different things. I mean, you won't, um, as long as you're not pushing too much down into your bobbin race, it shouldn't cause you a problem. But if you know you've got a, a bit of a delicate machine, then don't do it. Put a stabiliser underneath. And by stabiliser, what I mean is something else underneath, as in it could be another piece of fabric. Right. Um, it could be a piece of um, interfacing. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It just has to be a something underneath it. Mm -hmm. So fairly straightforward. Oh, so that's, that's my fencing on. Um, so now what I'm going to do is just go around um, all of the pieces to attach them. Um, you can make it as sketchy as you like. You know, the, the rule of three is quite good. So when you're going around the pieces, if you go around three times, it makes it look like it's meant to be. Oh, so, that's Yeah, that's so good. if you go around first and you've made a mess of it, don't worry, just go around it twice more and it's all good. <laughs> right, so this is with your... Have you, did you do this with a free motion foot on or not? No. Oh, gosh, really? No, I, See, I was, that looks like free motion, doesn't it? I was determined to do it as basic as possible, just yeah. because if you are a, a new person, yeah. then you know that you can achieve it. So, yeah, I just did it fairly straightforward. So this is where you could, if you wanted to, just um, whiz around with your um, different stitches. So I'm have you lengthened it at all, or what have you changed with your stitches, I think? I've just changed it to basic running stitch. Okay. So not, not done any lengthening. I'm on 2.4. Two and, um, 2 and not worried about where it is that you're sewing, how close to the edge, or keeping it consistent? No, I'm trying to make it sew the edge. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm trying not to go too much off, off the, the edge. edge. But if I go off the edge, I'm not bothered. Um, here I would... I did go around the, the square, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go up and round. On the roof, I used a different stitch. Ah. Oh. So, you know, you can Use choose. Use a zigzag. Yeah, or... choose what you like. But because we're whizzing, I don't know, we've got a little bit of time, actually. We're all good. We can. But I'll just do one of these houses and then you get a basic idea because I want to explain to you about the binding as well. And the sheet. And, and sheep. They are definitely sheep. Earlier on, I did say, oh, look at the little cats <laughs> on the hill. Like, just like, what? A there herd of cats, cats on the hill. <laughs> there are a of cats on the hill. They're sheep. I was like, oh, no, it was very early this morning. <laughs> right, they I'm are not, definitely sheep. I've only gone round once, just so that okay. you get the general idea. Then for your window. It's really good. I honestly thought you'd done that with a free motion. I thought it looks great, doesn't no. it? Like you say, I love that sort of whimsical doodled effect. Yeah. And for your window, you yeah. just go round, um, again, the same sort of thing. You might, like, I've got a brown, uh, beige thread in here, which on reflection is probably good for blending in, but not good for standing out. So um, so you want to use a contrasting thread, yeah. ideally. When I do this at home to finish it off, because we'll finish them all off, don't we? Um, I will go round it again, but in a darker thread, so you can actually see it. And then for the window pane bit, I've just gone across the middle. And if I can find the reverse, I went back. Oh, he doesn't like that. Maybe not with this machine. With my machine, it's liked it. So you just, just test it out. And then you just do a cross. Um, and you'll get a window pane. So, a.k.a. that kind yeah, of stuff there. Through. But that's Window pane. Thank you so much for saying that. I was talking about this the other day, saying about... Um, using a light box transferring patterns when you're holding yeah. it up to the window pane and it's got the lines through. Yeah. And the way I described it was like, you know the bars that go across <laughs> your window, like I was in a prison cell? And they went, how in the gallery? They were like, we have no idea what you're on about. No idea. A window it's pane. A, it's a vicism. <laughs> I'm so pleased that you've said that. Remember it, Kat. 
So yeah, you'll, you'll do that to all of them. And then you'll just put your different embellishments on there. So um, you'll put your, you know, if you want to put sheep on there or cows or whatever, ah. grass, you could embroider <laughs> and flowers then did you, on there. I was going to say, did you just hand stitch the little eels yeah. in the, the yeah, yeah, it's with it's some skein? Yeah. Uh, and buttons. obviously you've got that on the back. Uh, so that's not the pretty bit part about mm -hmm. it, is it? So you'll want to put your backing on yeah. there. Um, so that's basically what you'll do for the whole of the front piece embellish as you would like. The next thing that you want to do is to um, decide where you're going to put your uh, tapes to tie it at the side. And you used the, uh, the ribbon that was going around the back quarters. I used really the ribbon. Um, we want about 12 inches, um, but if it's not exactly 12 inches, don't you know, break yourself up about it. Um, what you want to be able to do is to tie it so if I had two pieces like that, I know that mm -hmm. I could tie them. So literally just half it and then half it again. Uh, and that will give you your um, ribbon pieces. Just get that straight and I'll cut that. Um, and then you want to measure about seven inches up from your raw edge. So if you get your ruler and just make a little on mark up there. So that's seven inches there. That'll be my seven. And you do the same on the other side. Okay. Um, do this before you do your binding and then you know that you've got it all in place. Um, pop it in with your ribbon facing inwards because what we're going to do is sew and bind it, and then the ribbon needs to be on the outside. So if you pin it, and then just, I would pin it inside as well, um, just to make sure that it didn't then go wayward and go into my seam, because otherwise you're unpicking. And we, well, we only unpick if we have to, don't we? Just on the other side. And then we're on to making our binding. You've used the, um, because you get in the Hessian one, you get two of those. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure what this um It is like a, is. a jute. I'm not, as you say, I'm not sure what the actual is description it is. Is it a linen? Because it says there's Hessian, two linen. Linen. It's linen. So there's one cotton in the middle and then these two are uh, linen. So yeah, it's nice fabric. Very nice fabric. Um, and I used that to go around the outside. I was a little bit um, more than ambitious about what, <laughs> how much I did. I did a bias binding. Okay. Uh, you don't actually need to no, do you a bias got binding. Curved, have you? <laughs> but it says bias binding, so I thought I will make a bias binding. Okay. Um, and the difference is that, as you say, if you had to go around curves, you'd want a bias binding. If you are going around the straight, it doesn't matter so much. Mm -hmm. So when you're cutting your fabric, uh, so I've got all my strips ready to do the binding. I did two inch strips just out of the, one of the fat quarters that I've got. Um, and I did it along the length of the grain of the fabric. So I kept the fabric square. If you were doing a bias binding, you'd find your 45 degree on your material. On your mat. Uh, on your mat, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, on that's right, yeah. Uh, so you've got warp and weft, as they say. You put that level with your 45, and then you cut across your 45 degree. Ah. So as you've cut it, that then becomes stretchy. So that's your bias part about it. Oh, thanks um, for explaining that, because we always talk about it, but I don't think... We yeah, wh it. where is the bias? That's what it is. It's a 45 degree. So this one is actually a bias. Um, and um, it's still two inches, so we've still done exactly the same thing, but I've made it with a bias maker. Uh, and I think we've got those coming on the website. They're like little triangles that you pull yeah. the, the material through. But as we haven't got those on the website yet, I won't do that one. I will do just a straightforward one. So you can, everybody can make this at home. So all you'll need to do is join your strips together so you sew them right sides together as we've probably done before. So you have them to match on a corner. 
and you're sewing then. Is there a right side to those? Can you see your right side on the wrong side? Uh, on this, yeah. Yeah, the, you can. Yeah, this, it's just a little bit lighter on the, the reverse. So you would have that and sew that across that line. You can actually mark it if you want to, where you're going to sew. I just kind of eyeball it from corner to corner, but it's, sometimes it's easier to mark it. It depends what your fabric's like. Um, so you would just then sew across that diagonal. Do you always do um, a two inch? We talked about this yesterday. Um, Sally was doing two and a half inch. Yeah, it depends. On um, So traditionally, if you're quilting, you'll want to do a two and a half because um, your things like jelly or well fabric mm -hmm. strip rolls yeah. are two and a half inches so it just makes sense to do a two and a half um i'm doing a two inch here because i want a one inch finished right and what that means is now normally if you know you me i see do one inch across here is that yeah. what it means right so you that's your um finish there then what you're going to do to make this into a one inch binding you're going to press it to the middle open it out and then press each outside to the middle again and are you going to do it with your iron or is it all right to finger press you can finger press but i would if i'm doing a whole strip i would do it with the iron okay. just because the creases will stay much better um and you wear your fingers out if you're doing that along a whole strip because you've got to go all the way around so that would then will give you if you folded that into the middle that's your edge finished right um and you simply would then uh, I think we just missed that. Would you be able to just show? Oh, sorry. Sorry, no. Well, Paul's so. just getting the right camera angle for you. <laughs> Thank so, you. So you're flat on the two inch. You fold in half, so that now becomes a one inch. You crease along the one inch line, so you've got your centre point. Open it out again. Take your edges and push them towards the centre. And then press that into a crease on both sides. So if you've seen binding before bias binding before it looks exactly like that now uh, and then when you've got it onto your material it will be finished like that so if i just sew this little bit on because i'm not sure that we'll have time to bind the whole got about five now. minutes yeah i so like the um stripey binding as well it's nice with the spot but you could use stripey yeah binding you could you with this back quarter and back. you could because look at how much we've got left sorry to take it across there again but look even piecing the back, those are decent pieces that we've got left oh, there. Oh, yeah, it's loads. So you could do a multiple binding if you wanted oh, to. Nice you don't one. necessarily, yeah, don't necessarily have to just keep it to, to the one colour. Uh, but then what you would do is you would get, you can start wherever you like. I would start not at a corner. On the <laughs> front of your project? Yeah. 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 So you open it out. So now we've got the edge of the binding against the edge of the material, uh, your panel. So just pin it along. And where you're going to sew, it's quite difficult, I'm afraid, to see it on this one. But you can see if I bend it, that's the half an inch. So you're going to sew along that little ditch there. Right. All the way along. When you come to the corner, you're going to do a mitered corner. So you go up and then back down again. You sew up to a, a quarter of an inch there, you go back down again, make a diagonal, and then you sew it along. So you're actually making a little triangle in the corner, and you carry on sewing. Right. So once you've finished with all of that, if you've sewn this corner, I'll, I'll quickly whiz along and sew it. If you've sewn this corner, you end up with a mitered corner. But I'll, I'll quickly go along and, um, and do that. Can you just leave yourself a little tail at the start to then tuck into? Yeah. So if you started, if you fold over about half an inch, pin that and leave it where it is. Um, and then start sewing about here so that when you come around at the end, you can tuck it in and just fold it neatly over. So well, let's um, see if we can get up to the corner. Now I haven't creased all this along, so not quite sure how that's going to go, but let's go. <laughs> so up to the corner. 
stop about a quarter of an inch. I'll take it out so you can see it. Then you push the binding up. So you're making a triangle. Am I in the right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Binding up, making a triangle. And then you pull the binding back down again. Take the crease and make it level with your edge. And then you start sewing again here so that you come back down here. And I'll show you what it looks like in a second. So as I say, I haven't, I haven't creased all the binding, but you understand. I like to see lots of different people's ways of doing binding as well, because there's so many different ways. When I first did binding, I used to spend ages getting into a bit of a rabbit hole of YouTube videos of different ways of doing it. And you just have to find what works for you, don't yeah. you? Um, so I'll just show you that there. So once you've pressed it, you'd press that back. Okay. You can see in the corner there. Oh, that's a nice mitered we've corner. We've got a mitered corner. And then on the reverse side, so you take it to the reverse, and you would, obviously we'll have trimmed this, so imagine that we'll have trimmed that. You take it backwards. So you've got your half inch here that you're folding over, sealing in the edge, mm -hmm. and taking it back down to your stitch line. So that'll be what your finished bit looks like. Obviously going around, I, can't, I haven't got enough hands, going around the corner. So then do you machine stitch down, hand stitch down? Yeah, I'm a hand stitcher. I okay. prefer to um, stitch that. Be basically because every time I've tried to machine stitch, I don't pay it. enough attention. I haven't yeah. It. Yeah. I think it's nice as well to just see, you, you've covered so many different techniques then when you do a bit of applique, like you say, a bit of quilting, you do all sorts of your binding and then also a bit of slip stitching, hand stitching. Yeah. You've got loads of nice yeah. little Yeah, and sometimes you, you, know, you want some, a project for in the evening, you can't have your machine on, maybe it's disturbing everybody else, that's something you can, you're still busy, aren't you? You can yeah. still finish it. Oh, I know so many people mm. who can't sit and watch the telly without doing something with their hands. Yeah. So they have their bits of projects where the little like, last bit of hand sewing can be um, the binding. Yeah. Uh, I so don't forget, we've, um, I did forget, but we don't do the binding. Okay. I wanted to show you the binding, but yeah. we don't do the binding until, until you, you put, put your, back. your back on. So you'd have your back on there first before you put that binding on. Otherwise, you're going to have to go over it again, but that's fine we haven't done any further with the scrappy, but uh, that yeah so that's your patchwork. inside that would be your inside that would be your outside you're gonna have, as you've gone round, you're gonna have caught all of your um little ribbons in on their inside uh, tie it up. brilliant thank you so much we've had a message so in from anne she said hi she said, this is a brilliant demo she says thank you so much for your clear instructions you. <laughs> she says i'm brand new to sewing so explanations like this are priceless oh thank you bless you well i'm hoping that Everybody that's new is not just sitting there going, oh, that's amazing. You can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Uh, and she said, uh, yeah, well, that, that's, that's amazing, isn't it? Especially anybody who is new to sewing. I think that this is a great project to start with, actually. Or if you're an experienced pro uh, sewer as well, it's great fun, isn't it? Yeah. Really yeah. enjoyed and that. You've got a little bit of poetic license. That's what I like. Yeah. And Debbie is not so prescriptive in her books to say that you only must do it this Absolutely. way. And, and if you haven't got this stripy fabric, you can't possibly do it. Absolutely. It's like, whatever you got, wherever you got it, just get it done sort of thing. Love yeah. it. Absolutely love it. Um, what was that? Sorry, Kat. Yeah, I think it's nice sometimes to look back at your, your first projects as well. I've still got all my things that I made, you know, three years ago when I started and I think, oh my word, look at that. But I, lo I still love to see how far I've come. So it's yeah. nice, you know, to, to get everybody involved, maybe children involved as well, of doing their own little bit of artwork. Oh yeah, this would be so simple for somebody to do. Yeah. Um, like Somebody who's confident sewing, but yeah, Absolutely. really good. Yeah. Love it. In the next hour with Jules, by the way, at 11 o'clock, we are going to show you how far our pre-printed panels go. They, you have been doing lots of sewing. <laughs> I've been a bit crazy. Uh, yeah, Jules has gone above and beyond with her prep work this week. Absolute brownie points because I don't know whether you've noticed all dotted around the set. <laughs> Our plant plot covers, um, all of the fabric storage trays. There are so many kits that we've got and different um, fabric options. Lots of Lewis and Irene as well. 
uh, which are lovely, aren't they? Nice little storage tub. So we'll Gorgeous, see you at yeah. 11 o'clock. Thank you ever so much. Thank you very Thank you. much. See you in an hour. Thank you. So the book that this comes from is Debbie Shaw's Sewing Room Accessories. It's only 7 dollars It's been very, very popular today. And I think these are, are great for sewers like you and me who, if you've got a sewing room or if you haven't got a sewing room, it's going to just um, make everything a bit more everything a bit prettier isn't it so if you don't have a dedicated sewing space and you need to make yourself a bit of a carry or a, a caddy to be able to put bits and bobs in how about using the brand new um p u glitter p p v c p v c glitter fabric got there in the end you know the one that we had yesterday you could do yourself some little pockets inside couldn't you or you could do it completely transparent absolutely um you've got the little notebook cover which jules is actually saying you'll probably have enough in your in your fat quarters to be able to do this as well which is exciting you've got 15 projects in here some great photographs you know debbie's husband she does he does all of the photography so um so of course you, uh, you get really clear step-by-step -step instructions and photographs. It makes it just 53 pence a project. It makes it just 53p a project. You've got some great tips and techniques as well as you're starting out here. So, I mean, we, we got a chance to sort of show you the binding, but, uh, I mean, Debbie does a really clear instructions here of how to do your binding, how to use the little binding tool, which hopefully we're going to get on the website ASAP as well, creating bias binding other different tools that you might find really useful, your sewing machine, your threads, your fabrics, your batting or wadding. Um, so we love that book for £7.99, great value for money. Loads of you have checked out on that. We've also had some great bundles. Now the one that you've seen the one made out of is using half a metre of vanilla and then also you're getting one, two, three, four fat quarters. So you're getting a hessian, you're getting your two linens and you're getting your cotton in there as well, which is uh, the, the one that Jaws has made to make this. She's added some lace from home, she's added some buttons for the little birds on the rooftops, for the little sheep on the hills. You can do as much or as little embellishing as you want. You could do some uh, little French knots and uh, lazy daisies and some hand embroidery with some florals, or you could do like a front door with a number on, make it like your house. It's up to you, there's so much scope with this, isn't there? There's loads that you could do. Even if you've got Susan Briscoe's book, it talks about how to use photographs printed onto fabric. So you could always put like some, a photo in, in the window of somebody's face, couldn't you? Great. If I'm honest, I have no idea why on earth this is 11 99 It's a great price, isn't it? Especially, it's one of those affordable bundles, especially if you're getting the book, to be able to do loads of projects from the book and having plenty of fabric to get on with and working with different textures as well, working with these lovely, quite organic uh, feeling fabrics, it's lovely. So the one that Jules was working with was this one, which is half a metre of your pink and then this time you're getting five fat quarters. So you're definitely going to have enough with these to be able to piece the backing as well. You're getting two of your stripes, your almost like linen look one, your spot and your floral. All of those included, your cotton, um, your polyester, all five beautiful fabrics, plus your half a metre of pink. That actually surprised me how beautiful that looked all coming together. It looked amazing. And I was thinking, oh, I think I'll probably go with a more neutral one, as my head always does. Whereas actually, that one stormed into the lead as I saw that coming together. It looked beautiful. And then this one is with half a metre of your um, cream. Or in fact, actually, it is that vanilla and that one was cream. This one's cream. Um, and it comes with a hessian fat quarter, a hearts fat quarter, a gingham fat quarter, and then this one with the, sno the uh, snowflakes, which is lovely. It's like a snowflake. It's really pretty. Really, really pretty indeed. Uh, the H640, very, very quickly, you will need one of these. One sheet is absolutely fine to be able to do the sewing machine cover. Maybe you wanted to make something else in the book. Absolutely fine. It's brilliant. Sharon has asked a question. Morning from sunny Devon. Good morning. Won't clog up your machine, no. It does not clog up your machine. You should clean your machine, probably after most large projects. Um, probably more than you think you should, to be honest. I'm guilty, I don't 
Oh, I don't do it anywhere near enough of us as I should. Maybe once a, me a week, just give it a little dust. Um, those of you that are, are on our sewing, um, I mean, inside the, um, what's it called? The bobbin case, like inside that little bobbin, the gubbins inside, inside all of there. If you are on the Sewing Street fan page, I don't know whether you saw Becky Alexandra Frost. She was cleaning out hers and there is so much lint and bits and uh, there's so much in there. Uh, that's that, that you don't realize do you so definitely yeah clean it once a week if you can this your h640 is only nine pounds 99 pence well, we're going to be talking all things awesome in the next hour it's cat's hour she says grab a cup of tea or maybe a hot chocolate but meet us back in the next couple of minutes because it's cat's first big show that she's put together her own bundles her own uh, sort of makes and picked out some of her favorite projects that are really all to me we've got, not got just quilting we've got dressmaking there we've got needle felting in there we have got some quilting as well so lots of projects and lots of fabrics to get us all kitted out we'll see you right after this if you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello, my name is Sally Stevens. I'm from Worcestershire, a little town called Upton upon Severn, which is a lovely little riverside town. And not far from there, I also have a little sewing studio, so I can work and leave all my mess left out um, when I'm preparing projects and quilts and so on. My speciality is in fact quilting, patchwork and quilting, and I probably started that when I was about 14 years ago. So as I often joke, that was only seven years ago. In fact, it was rather a lot longer, but I've always enjoyed crafting and patchwork really hooked me and I love it. So now then, what can I tell you? Some, something you may not realise about me is that although lots of you have seen me many, many times on, um, on sewing TV and at classes, because I, I teach as well, um, I also do a lot of unpicking, so don't be afraid ever. If you have to unpick things, so do we. It's not a problem. We all have to start somewhere. And sometimes you get a bit cocky and think, oh, I can just do that without pinning or without this. And then you think, ah, I should have paid attention to my own words. So some sewing tips for you. That's one, keep a, a seam ripper handy. That will always be your friend. And um, another one, that I think is very important, whether you're a beginner or more experienced, when you're sewing something, particularly for the first time, a new technique, slow down. There's no rush, it's not a race. Have a little practice with spare fabrics if you've got them before you use your best fabric that you've just purchased so you get your techniques just right. But also slow down, take your time, watch what you're doing, think about what you're doing and read the instructions. That's always very useful. So what can I say? I've been asked to say what my claim to fame might be, and I would have to say, in all honesty, being on Sewing Street. Hi, I'm Rosie Wells. My name's Poppy, and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette, and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle Channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits, feeling good. It's about looking great, making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside. And it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. Hello, my name's Fiona Hesford and I'm founder of Sew Girl. I'm based down in Worthing on the south coast of England. And I've got a range of sewing patterns which I've developed over the last few years, which are projects for loose fitting clothing, everyday simple garments, things that I really love to wear myself. And I'm going to be bringing you them to Sewing Street over the next few months. 
So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Did you know that if you shop with Sewing Street, you're only going to pay one lot of postage all day? That's one payment of £3.95 no matter what you're buying. And you can check out as many times as you like without having to pay another delivery charge. So shop online at www.sewingstreet.com or you can order via our call centre which is 0800 001 4433. Oh, it's autumn here at Sewing Street. That is a beautiful photograph. Thank you, Hayley. Hayley B made that for us. It's autumn officially here at Sewing Street, even though I know it's nice and warm outside. It is actually, I think, officially autumn. What date, what date is winter? Oh, well, if it's the 22nd then, we're just getting ready for autumn. By the time your products get to you, it'll probably be about the 20th, won't it? Let's face it. So, um, we are getting all kitted out ready for autumn. We've had some beautiful projects recently. So, um, Kat, of course, is one of our producers. She's a full-time producer now. She's been a bit of... Well, you've done everything here, haven't you? She says, I'm here now uh, as a, a fully-fledged producer. She says, I've been cameras, done directing, you've been a floor manager, Manager, haven't you? You've done all sorts. You haven't been a presenter yet. You've been a hand model on the micro stitch tour, uh, and now she's scheduling. So she's been scheduling uh, lots of the different hours for you. This is one that she's particularly proud of. Love all of the projects. Let's start with one of my favourite projects since day dot. I must say, I have really, really been drawn to starting needle felting. I absolutely love these kits. I haven't got her artwork here with me because she's taking it home, um, but it's absolutely incredible. So this is your autumn wood, which was really, really popular. It sold out, I think, before we even got to the, the yeah, it sold out twice, before we even got to Delphine's show, which was at 11 o'clock um, one day last week. I'll try and find out the date for you so you can watch it back because you won't believe how you can turn this wool into this artwork, which is just amazing. So, I mean, Delphine talks you through everything that you need to know. If you've got the needle felting starter kit, uh, then that's all that you need to get going. If you haven't, have a look on the website. If you type in needle felting, um, then you'll see that starter kit, which you get your block, you get um, all your needles that you'll need. But the quality of this wool, I mean, Delphine has gone high and low, finding for you the most beautiful multi-tonal wool. Look at all those different colours, which are perfect for autumn. The only thing that you won't have, um, which were in the kits last week, were the, uh, the background of, of orange felt, which doesn't matter because if I'm being honest, Delphine didn't even use it in her demo. She says, I used a bit of scrap denim. You can use anything as your background. Something that's got a loose weave though, use something like a denim or, um, or a felt, as you say. So this one is this beautiful green. I mean, look at all of those colors again. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it will go such a long way. This is what you can make, can you believe? From, from the wall in my hands to the art work that you can create and Delphine's background is an uh, is art but don't be put off if you're like me thinking oh, I'm not very good at art I'm not very good at drawing I'm not very good at painting because Delphine breaks it down beautifully and she's done all of the hard work for you so she'll really break down things like well I wouldn't even know this when you're drawing or when you're painting you need to think about what the she said what the time of year it is what time of day it is and where your light is in the picture. So if you've got the sun, what time of day is it? Is it like dusky? Is it just turning into, because that's a beautiful time of autumn, isn't it? When sun starts to go uh, to set, it reflects onto all of the leaves that are on the floor and think about where that is and where your reflections will be and where that light will hit. And she's done all of that hard work for you. So with your embroidery floss, you'll get black, red, orange, green, yellow, you get all of those to be able to do all of your lovely little flowers, your grass, your trees, everything that you need to know is here. So with um, your wool, 
she takes you through with your instru instructions step by step how to create your your background your forest and it's up to you i mean everybody's is going to be slightly different these are really you can see they're glossy paper they're really lovely quality instructions ones that are going to, to, to be used i'm sure time and time again they're absolutely beautiful um and delphine said it does become a bit of an addiction if you start um needle felting you'll you will get yourself a bit of a stash but this is plenty to be able to start with french knots it will teach you how to do the french knot embroidery it's up to you if you want to do more embroidery on it or less embroidery on it but she will talk you through everything it is your artwork remember all of your steps are incredibly clear uh, it's just 23 pounds 49 remember you get delphine's instructions which if you want to watch her show back it was on the 11th of september 11th of September, you can watch it on YouTube at 11 o'clock. It's This one was the most popular of the two. It sold out twice during the show. Um, I don't know whether the other kit is available on the website. No, this is it. The only way of, uh, of getting any of Delphine's needle felting artwork like this is this one, the autumn one. Was the last summer sale though on there? No? Gone? That's sold out as well. So we've rebundled this especially for today's show. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? And it's such lovely soft wool. I'm so excited to see these on the Facebook fan page. Uh, Delphine said somebody who had never done it before put a picture up and they were saying, oh, it's my first go. And she actually, Delphine actually thought that it was her picture that she'd put an up. She thought, that's, that, I'm sure that's mine. She says, no, that's hers. It's the first time she's done it. And it was amazing incredible so have a go have a go a new hobby and a new craft there is the starter kit as i said available on the web brilliant okay so we've got some fabric bundles shall we start with this one which a lovely autumnal bundle cat she spent a lot a lot of time a lot of time putting together some of your favorite um, fabrics and seeing what works, different colours, what works together. £17.99. pence. This one is like a lovely, you know, when the leaves fall on the ground, you go on these beautiful autumnal walks. This is what it reminds me of. I love an autumnal walk. I absolutely love it. I think over lockdown, I've got really into my walking. And autumn walks are just the best, aren't they? So you're getting half a metre of your brown. Or brunette, I should say. That one's called half a metre of brunette half a metre of crimson, half a metre of hot tomato, and then your spots, you've got half a metre of your tan spot, which is a poplin weight cotton, and then half a metre of your yellow spot, which again, they're both poplin weights and the other ones are your quilting weight. You don't need to worry too much about that, if I'm honest. Um, when I was on with Sally Ann, she had a bundle quite similar to this that she was quilting with. And I said, oh, how did you get on with using two different weights of fabric? She says, if I'm being honest, I didn't even notice. So they're just a slightly lighter weight cotton, but they're really beautifully soft. How about doing like leaves for bunting or doing a really beautiful autumnal scene with your patchwork or a plique. You could applique lots of leaves onto cushions or bags, couldn't you? You could do something similar to Delphine's artwork, how she's done the trees. You could use like your browns and your lovely crimsons and the hot tomato. That's a great combination, actually. $17.99, and that's a lot of fabric for your money. Uh, bearing in mind you're getting two and a half metres of fabric in total here. What about a roaring fire? A roaring fire, like burning embers. Be beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, or unbelievable, as uh, Paul just said. Thanks, Paul, he's back. How many days have you been doing now on your own, directing, fully-fledged director here in the new studio? Day three, and now he's able to drop in the jokes. He did say to me this morning, I'm sorry I've been concentrating so hard that I haven't even told any jokes yet. He's been on fire today. Unbelievable. Um, so we've got a really gorgeous bundle. Uh, the barley pops behind me are absolutely amazing. We love these. They're probably the most autumnal um, design roll that we, well, they are the most autumnal design roll that or um, jelly roll strips that we have. Um, we've put together a complimentary bundle to go with. So if anybody that's already got the barley pops, or if you want the barley pops, they, we are going to bring them to you today. Oh, in fact, there you go. The graphics are live for them now. It's £39.99. You're getting two and a half, uh, two and a half inch 
pre-cut, which are all laser cut. And they are such beautiful colours. They really, really are. They're all hand dyed, traditionally dyed in barley. The Hoffman barley pops. In fact, I've got some here. Let me show you them. They go a long, 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 long way. They really do go a long way. Um, there's Wendy Orlando. She's worked quite a lot with, with the different um, barley pops that we've had. And she was so shocked the first time that she worked with them of how far they went. For £40, pounds, you're looking at a pound a strip with such gorgeous colours. Brilliant quality. If you start piecing them together, they just look absolutely gorgeous. Amazing, aren't they? So you're getting all of these different colours, all hand dyed, true autumnal shades. And of course, you can subcut these, subcut into diamonds here. You could do hexes, you could do squares. If you've got any of the Pam and Nikki Lynn top books, if you got the one yesterday, it's filled with project ideas. Absolutely filled. I think that's one of my favourites. Love these colours. They are absolutely beautiful. Um, you can cut them into squares, you can subcut them, you can use them for binding, as Jules was saying. Just £39.99 for all of those strips. Um, but Kat has, for the first time ever, put together a complimenting bundle. Talk me through, talk me through. So, I want you to hear um, Kat's inputs. Now she's saying, yes, obvious route would have been going dark browns. And you could, by all means, with the, um, you know, the, the bundle that we had here, the autumn bundle, that would go really, really nicely. In fact, let me show you the um, brunette and the crimson, hot tomato, your spots. They all look lovely with um, the barley pops. We've got another complimenting bundle now, brand new today, which you get, which is very different. She says, I wanted to brighten it up a bit. So you're getting half a metre of nude, half a metre of your neutral. So remember, this is separately, but I just want to show you how they complement. And then this is your tan, which is a mix of fabric. So it's got a slight sort of mottled effect, which is really, really lovely. So that's your, your mottle effect. This is an orange mixer, which again will look absolutely gorgeous with some of these lovely oranges. When you look at some of these oranges in here, it really pulls on this one. This is fab, putting in metallic spots. So if you love the, some of those ones that I um, opened out earlier on, in fact, any of them, it's all going to work with your metallic gold spot. And then, just to really brighten it up, how about teaming it with a green? This is your chartreuse mixer, which has got that lovely mottle effect again, and it's going to look lovely with all of your green tones, with any of your... Um, warmer tones, any of your reds, looks great. And then we've also got, this is called fur green, F-I-R, fur green. Not as in F-U-R, fur. What, 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 fur? Grr. What do you mean? I thought you meant like furry. Not grr, Paul. Uh, 2349, all of these colours. So this is your bundle, half a metre of fur, half a metre of chartreuse, half a metre of your metallic gold spot, half a metre of your orange mixer, half a metre of your tan mixer, and then half a metre of nude, 23.49. And they're all half metre pre-cuts. That's a really great bundle, goes perfectly with your, your barley pops. She's saying thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me shimmy all these out of the way. There you go. So, there's your orange mixer, your tan mixer, and your nude. The mixers go really nice. It's nice to have different textures into the bundle. And having the metallic as well, again, brings another texture, doesn't it? All of those available. Sorry, I'm getting in a bit of a mess here. £23.49. Oh, loads of people being very complimentary about Cat's Bundles. Thank you for your messages. Keep them coming in. Come say hello. If you want to send in any e emails to Cat directly, send all your fan mail into studio at sewingstreet.com. 
studio at sewingstreet.com. Loads of these already checked out. I'm presuming if you've got the barley pops, this is going to go perfectly with your barley pops. Um, remember, two and a half metres, one, two, actually, in fact, three metres of fabric for 23.49, and it does team so well with your barley pops. Oh, right, so I did say, go and get yourself a cup of tea or a hot chocolate, because we've got a hot chocky bundle. It smells delicious. I'm so pleased that we've um, we found out Delphine told us that this was um, scented. It's so lovely. No, it is. It smells amazing. They go, no, this one doesn't smell. It does. Take my word from it. Have you had a good smell of it? It's so lovely. This is your hot chocolate, your gingerbread man. <gasps> Isn't that gorgeous? This is... Um, this is you, Lewis and Irene, designer print. It's gorgeous. Lovely little hearts on there in the background. Oh, that just looks a good hot chocolate, doesn't it? Lots of whipped cream, maybe a few sprinkles, with your little straw. That one's a nice one as well, with your flake. Um, speaking of sprinkles, you then also got half a metre of your sprinkles. Half a metre of your tan spot and half a metre of your mixer in claret, which again has just got that slight bit of texture. And I don't mean texture to touch, it's 100% cotton, uh, quilting cotton, but it's got a, like a bit of a mottle effect. It looks really nice with the mugs, actually. That goes in really, really well with the colour of the mugs, doesn't it? She's done ever so well, hasn't she, Cat? Our cat, she's doing very, very well picking these bundles out. Half a metre of your hot chocolate fabric, half a metre of your sprinkles, half a metre of your spot and half a metre of your mixer. Oh my gosh, if I eat it, does it taste of chocolate? No, I won't eat it. Oh, it smells absolutely amazing. Wait until you get it home. We're wondering whether when you wash it, if it loses its smell. I don't know. If you've had it before, please leave your message in. Have you noticed, if you've bought anything from this collection before, had you noticed that it smells of chocolate? Because we didn't until Delphine worked with it the other day. Until Delphine was ironing with it and she was like, I can smell really strong chocolate and I haven't got any chocolate in the house, I promise. <laughs> it's just amazing, isn't it? Uh, speaking of Delphine, her Autumn Woods kit is really, really limited. Uh, you're getting all of your wool felt. Um, which is lovely. You're then getting all your skeins as well for your embroidery of your scene, plus you're getting your autumn wood needle felt and hand embroidery instructions. Everything that you need to know will be in there and it's a really lovely glossy pack of instructions. If you do want still the starter pack to, of needle felting to get, to get started, then it is on the website. Just type in needle felting. Brilliant. Let's stay with quilting for a moment, quilting weight fabrics. William Morris. Now this has been one of the most talked about and one of the most popular fat quarter bundles that um, we've ever had, ever. It was the biggest early bird we've ever done. It was the most incredible early bird. Um, and still, without having an early bird price to it, it still leaps and bounds beyond where I thought the price would be. It's so good, so good. It's just 59.99. Now, bearing in mind, you're getting one, two, let me count them, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh my gosh, 10, 11, 12 fat quarters. You're getting 12 fat quarters here. Am I allowed to open this? <gasps> they are all absolutely amazing. So we did a bit of research and we had a look. Obviously, you probably all know, if you go to um, any of your department stores or any of your national trust houses, to the gift shops in any heritage sort of stores, you can pay so much money for anything that is associated with the name William Morris, whether that be a little purse, whether it be a toiletry bag, whether it be a cushion. I saw a cushion in a very famous department store for £60 last week. Um, they also had John Lewis big rugs, and I thought, I'm not even going to see how much they are. I bet they're a fortune. So, for this bundle, bear in mind, you can make so many 
different projects with this. If you've got a Fat Quarter book, one of the Wendy Gardner or, or, or the Debbie Shaw ones, there is so much that you can do with a Fat Quarter. It's half of a half metre. And this one, this exact Fat Quarter bundle that you may have seen elsewhere is selling for £74.99. And don't know, even more than that. £78.50. £78.50. And, and that's for exactly the same fat quarter bundle. Oh, they've only got two left in stock. It's always popular. People pay. Because also, that would be great value. Bearing in mind, you can make a cushion front with this. And a cushion front elsewhere is going to cost, what, 50, 40, 50, 60 pounds and more. You could make beautiful cushion fronts with this. You've got, I'm going to open them all out so you can see, Strawberry Thief, one of the most popular uh, William Morris prints. And you've got it in two different scale prints. They are your standout William Morris classic prints, iconic prints. Some from the most famous archives, William Morris. Um, that one's lovely. This is your snake's head. Again, another iconic print from William Morris. And the colours are lovely. I mean, we've put together a great blender bundle for you. Um, that's amazing, isn't it? Can you see the snake's head? That's such a famous print. And they're all the different colourways, which I love. So you've got the reds and the golds. You've got the teals and the golds. This one is so beautiful. They are uh, obviously stunning quality. They're William Morris. They are Morris & Co. Fat Quarters. Um, again, the Strawberry Thief, which is arguably probably the most famous print from William Morris. Again, in the smaller print, but this time in a different colourway with those teals and um, the goals. And then, again, these are the exact prints you're going to get at home. William Morris Strawberry Thief in the larger scale print. I would, I would really struggle to cut these up into smaller projects. But I know that Bex Reed was giving us so many different ways of using them for binding, for cushions, for bags, for, for um, patching, for dressmaking. So little pockets or patch pieces on, on um, dressmaking would look lovely. You could make it go a really, really long way. Or you could be extremely opulent and you could use them for the most incredible uh, quilt which I'm sure would be passed down through generations at your family for $79.99 that is sorry not $79 $59.99 bearing in mind how much does it cost for a quilt kit a William Morris quilt kit you can pay hundreds and hundreds of pounds if you get this and our complimentary bundle or a your vanilla for the early bird and any of the books that you've got at home maybe a quilt book in mind how affordable is that this is your deep navy blue colorway I think this is um, one of my favourites. Oh, the strawberries just pop. They look absolutely amazing. Um, we've also got it in the smaller scale print again. <coughs> Excuse me. There's the smaller scale. Oh, I love these. In fact, I delivered some of these yesterday to... Mr. John Scott, those of you that know our John, who bought some from us, um, he was busy filming yesterday for Pride of Britain. No, I don't know whether I can tell you. <laughs> I don't think he put it on Facebook, did he? Did you say a secret? Oh, no. I'm, I'm going to uh, stop talking. But uh, yeah, John, um, I love, 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 love John, man, as we all know. He's one of a close friend of mine. So I went and delivered it to his house yesterday. $59.99. <laughs> no, he hasn't worn, he hasn't worn. <laughs> so you get 12 of the fat quarters for $59.99. Stop laughing at me, you're making me feel really uncomfortable. <gasps> He'll be watching. This is why, do you know, sometimes my um, sister, she works in quite um, a, not a secret job, but something that you're not really supposed to be talking about all the time. She's like, I'm not telling you anything about what I do, because you'll just tell everybody on, on the telly. So, yeah, sorry. <sighs> just forget sometimes. Right, so we've had a message from Pauline. Morning, Pauline. Love your bundles, cat. Remind people to watch the last George Clark programme is where, where the, he visited where? He visited 
the Stadden. He went. He visited Stadden, which Standen, Standen, sorry, which is where. It, oh, it's a National Trust house. That makes sense. So this is where they had the William Morris fabrics. Oh, I wonder what pro, what channels that's on. We'll have a look. This is the Standen range. You can see some of the William Morris designs. She said, "Keep up the good work." <laughs> she says, "I've become a fabricaholic." I think we all have, haven't we? Oh, with deals like this, though. Uh, honestly, I don't see how you couldn't make the most of that when you see how much little toiletry bags and uh, makeup cases cost. Be a fortune, aren't they? That's your marigold. You've got the marigold in the green, you've got it in the dark blue, you've got it in the gold as well, which is just gorgeous. You've got the strawberry thief, larger scale print. Where's that, Paul? Yeah, tell me. Oh, you're talking about tea. No, thank you. Oh, I thought you were just saying, I thought somebody had messaged, I thought John had messaged you and you didn't want me to know. I thought, why are you whispering about me? Mm. Paul just wants a cup of tea. Okay, let's do the complimentary bundle. Sorry, these are all just so precious that, you know, when you spend that extra bit of time doing your lovely pressing, making sure they're all folded. When you get this home, this is exactly what you'll do at home as well. It's just take them all out, lay them all out, stroke them all, fold them all. Just have a look and think what it is that you're going to do with them. Maybe... You could also, if you know somebody, you don't need to gift them all, but it'd be a nice gift for somebody if you were to even just put a couple of them. You could make so many presents out of this, couldn't you? If somebody who loves William Morris, whether you make something or just gift them the fabric. I love that. And especially with a complimentary bundle now, it's going to go a really long way. So if you have got the William Morris bundle, Kat has put together this. If you, if you got it as the early bird, as I know so many of you did, it's the first time we're seeing this complimentary bundle. Do you know what colour we wanted to put in there as well? And it's out of stock, misty blue. So if you've got misty blue um, in your stash, definitely add that in as well, because that's going to look really, really nice with it. In fact, there's half a metre on the website if you want it. Um, but it does go really well. Kat spent a lot of time working with the colour chart on this bundle to, to get the right colours for you. So your navy blues obviously are going to complement all of these lovely blues. You've got your sort of claret tones, which are your lovely traditional, your reds. Um, then we've also got beige, obviously for all of your lovely golden tones. Your khaki is going to really draw on some of the greens in your blues. Your greens in the teals, obviously your green um, with this one as well. What was this one called? Sorry, this one's called Marigold. Marigold, they're all absolutely beautiful. Great choices. Again, Kat's put together a beautiful complimentary William Morris bundle. Even if you're just using one of your fat quarters and incorporating your half metres, it makes your William Morris fabric stand out even more. It will make it sing. Um, it will obviously make it go a lot further if you're using... Uh, you know, solid fabrics like this, but also I think it really shows off the, the fabric. So if you're just doing a lovely binding, maybe you've got this fabric and you're wanting to do uh, a binding, uh, that would just look absolutely beautiful with, you could do it with a claret binding or you could do it with the blue binding or with your, your um, nude, whichever colours you want, or your khaki, they're all complementing each other, which is fantastic. So four half metres, that's two metres in, in, in total, that will really, really boost your stash. Okay. We've also got some great inspiration books. Now, obviously, William Morris, I would sit and dwell over these for so long thinking, right, what can I make, what can I make, what can I make? Or maybe you just want to get to sewing and you're thinking, right, do you know what? 
this is going to be one of my first big quilts. So I want something simple that the, the, the fabric is just going to do all the talking. This is a great book to do that because it's 14 quilts you can make in a day. No one's timing you. There's no time. Um, it's not all just going to turn into a pumpkin at midnight if you haven't made it into a quilt. Don't worry. But it's good to be able to know that these are great quick quilts. It doesn't need to be a full quilt. It could be a table runner. You could do a table topper. You could repeat this block time and time and time again and make yourself a big quilt. These would look really, really nice with William Morris as well, wouldn't they? You could do, again, table runner options, but carry it on and make it into a quilt. Whatever you choose, uh, this table runner will stand out on your table, showcase your quilting talent. You know, we are getting to those darker nights, the, um, the, the darker mornings, the darker nights, and you just think, right, maybe if it's a bit dreary outside, I want to do a nice bit of afternoon sewing. A quilt projects, I always think of ones that you're going to, it's like starting a telly series, isn't it? I still haven't watched Game of Thrones or any of those because I just feel like I've got to commit about six months of my life to it, and sometimes you feel like that about a quilt project, whereas these are fantastic. English Garden. <laughs> Paul's saying, you need to watch Game of Thrones. You could do it in a month, Vic. I know, but that's if I watch how many episodes a day? About eight episodes a day. So once I get home this afternoon, two o'clock, if I watch two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I can go to bed at ten, and that's just going to be my days for the next month. I can do it. That's fine. Will I really enjoy it? It's the best thing ever, Paul's saying. <gasps> uh, gentle Waves. Zoo Review. See, they're using all the different uh, animal print fabrics, but doing it in Willow Morris or in any of your autumnal themed colours are going to look completely different. Picnic season. Your charming chains. Your exploded block quilt. Oh, that one would be a good to show off your William Morris because look, they're nice big blocks. So I'd put one of the big prints of the Strawberry Thief and maybe one of the smaller prints. You could use like your marigold fabrics as your board around the edge and then just use a vanilla or a cream or your noodle or any of your complimentary bundles for the background and do some gorgeous quilting. But that's perfect for William Morris, isn't it? What about... Um, little hexes, so many projects in here, let me count. This is what I love about the Annie's Quilting books is that you get so many 14 projects, which is a lot for your money again, isn't it? It's only 8 99 14 projects, 8 99 for 64 pence a project. Can't go wrong, and what quick, nice, easy quilts, it's just brilliant. Okay, so that's quilts you can make in a day. Let's move on to a different craft and talk about dressmaking. Now, this is one of my favourite things about autumn is the fashion. I love having those nice big coats. I love wearing cord. I like wearing nice, um, you know, warm, heavier weight fabrics. But as dressmakers, I think a lot of people get a bit scared of anything. If you've just made, you know, like your cotton um, dresses maybe through summer, if you are thinking of maybe trying to work with denim or trying to work with a heavier weight fabric and you're thinking, oh, I don't know what to do, we've done so many great demonstrations over the last couple of weeks. Um, the first one that we'll do, should we do one of the jackets? These are both from So Different. We've got a long line jacket and we've got the cocoon jacket, which is a lovely shape. But this, the great thing about So Different patterns, well, they sell out every single time they come to air. And I think for a, a number of reasons. One, the size range in one pattern is fantastic. So a lot of brands, they will launch their size um, 8 to 14 and then from... 16 to 24 for example whereas here actually it's all combined into one pattern so if you're on that borderline you're not quite sure where you want to be don't worry it will be size 8 to 26 all in one pattern um, this is a really lovely pattern to be able to have a bit of a play around with color blocking as well can you see all the different sections you've got all of these seams which means that obviously great place to alter seams mean that you can obviously lengthen and shorten really easily or you can do some colour blocking and different pattern matching and really explore your skills. 
the great thing also about so different patterns is if I turn the pattern over, you have got all of your sizing chart here, which is in the description on the website if you want to have a bit of a closer look. But that's all very clear. It's got your, um, your measurements in, in inches and in centimetres there. I like this section here which tells you some fabric suggestions of different fabrics that are going to suit the pattern. Did you watch the Great British Sewing Bee earlier on in the year? It feels like ages ago actually, doesn't it? Earlier on this year, when Sewing Bee was on, I think that was one thing. Everybody sort of tries to get a bit adventurous or falls in love with a certain fabric and want to incorporate it, but it might not suit the pattern. So different, they always do patterns that suit a lot of different fabrics. So any medium to heavyweight structured fabrics will work with this, like jacquards, you can use twills, you can use denims. How different will this look in a denim? So that looks like a really smart coat that you would wear to a wedding. I mean, that is really fancy. Whereas if you put this with a denim or a boiled wool, it's going to look completely different. If you've got some old, uh, you know, furnishing fabrics, maybe you used to do, my mum used to do upholstery and she used to have a bit of an obsession of collecting lots of different furnishing fabrics. She doesn't do it anymore and she just still won't part with them. And this is a great one to try something out and turn something that was maybe an upholstery fabric into a jacket. Um, velvet linen is going to look completely different in the, in the summer as well. But it is a lovely long jacket with deep pockets it's got a really nice sort of wide sleeve as well I think it's called a um, raglan sleeve raglan sleeve it's got the uh, the waist point um, which sits the um, uh, and the bottom hem sits mid length so it's a really nice flattening length and of course you can still lengthen it or shorten it if you're taller or shorter nice and easily. What I love about the so different patterns is they also give you a layout diagram of how to cut your fabric. So they do it for, for, for both widths as well, whether it be 45 wide or whether it be 60 wide, how much fabric you're going to need. Only other thing that you need to add to your pattern is some interfacing. Just some medium weight would be absolutely fine. No fastenings, no zips, nothing that, that's too tricky. It do, they do earn their difficulty by stars, so it is more of an intermediate pattern, I'd say. If you've done some sewing before, uh, the great thing about Sew Different Patterns is they have a blog online, they've got really, really clear instructions inside the booklet, they've got lovely reusable pattern paper. We demo it here as well. We've done a whole hour dedicated to just this pattern, which was back in March. It was right at the start of Sewing Street. We only launched the 14th of uh, Feb. We had Laura, who actually designed the patterns, and Tree, who is one of her demonstrators, um, coming on to, to launch the patterns. So that was back on, what date in March, sorry? 9th of March, if you want to watch it back. That was on the 9th of March. You can watch it on YouTube. And you can see Laura as well, who is this lady here. Um, that's her, and she is she she designed and and uh, and did all of the patterns. So this one is the cocoon jacket, which you can see is a slightly shorter length. It's got still got pockets, which we love. It's got a shorter sleeve. This would be really really nice with like a polo neck jumper underneath, maybe a contrasting colour. You could be quite daring with this one, I think. Um, it's a nice relaxed fit it almost sort of bubbles out um, and just comes under your bottom it's, it's a really nice length so fabric suggestions on here again it says for the body is a fully lined jacket as well so it's really luxurious it doesn't say that it's as difficult as the other one it's only got two stars of difficulty so come on adventurous beginners you can make yourself a nice winter jacket which they're expensive, aren't they? Each year, if you're wanting to change your... your old, I've had jackets that I've had for probably over 10 years where you just keep them year after year. Um, and I think this would be one of those jackets that you bring out of the wardrobe time and time again. So, you can do it in any medium and heavyweight wool, boiled wool, heavy cottons, denim, corduroy, um, gabardine. I don't know what gabardine is. Uh, felt tweed, heavy knits, so lots of the fabric that we've got today actually is going to be perfect for this and then uh, most lining fabrics are going to be suitable. If you want it to have a, as a contrast that would look really really nice, just have it as a similar uh, similar weight. Um, £14.99 you can see that you've got here the box of uh, measurements which are in the description on our website so have a look. That was 
demonstrated back on the 6th of August this year, 6th of August, if you want to watch back on YouTube. And that's lovely Laura, who, as I say, was in on the 9th of March. So if you do want to watch those shows back, please, please do, because she talks more about the company. Uh, so we just mentioned some of the fabrics that are going to be suitable for both the patterns, and these will all be perfect. We've got some lovely tweeds. I must say, this wool is, you know when you think of like the finest Savile Row um, stores that do all of the tailoring of men's fancy suits and beautiful coats and waistcoats and jackets, this is that quality. Um, this for me is, is just the most beautiful wool. This is your Asheville tweed and it is stunning, stunning quality. If you're thinking of doing like a messenger bag or um, any bag making with it as well, it's going to be brilliant. For that autumn feel, what about like a nice waistcoat for a gent or a jacket? Uh, for either of the jackets, this is going to be absolutely perfect. It's so, so soft and it's gorgeous quality, just £8.99. Even if you want to do sort of like a poncho style, without worrying about having too many fittings and darts. I used to have one very similar to this and it had a buckle that went round and it was almost like a cape style poncho and it was really, really lovely. I had so many, had so many compliments on it. I actually got it from a famous store that starts with an R and then the second word is an L. But I did buy it at the outlet, uh, at the out, um, at the uh, what's it called, outlet store, because they're really expensive. But it is when you feel that quality, you'll see exactly what I mean. It's just eight pounds ninety nine. That's your Asheville tweed. We've also got your Hunter's tweed. Now this is slightly different because it's got a lurex running through. It's got uh, it's got like a metallic gold lurex which is really nice. This would be perfect if you want to do that long line jacket um, with, as, as more like an occasion jacket. This is really special, isn't it? This is your Manhattan tweed, sorry, for £8.99 a half metre. How wide is this cat? I think it's one four five. I like the fringing as well. I'd try and incorporate that. You could even have it down uh, the front of your, your jacket or you could have it on the front of, uh, just on pockets, you could use that, or on cuffs, it'd look lovely. It's just running along the salvage edge. £8.99, 145 wide. The other tweed that we have was one that I had with Faye um, a few weeks ago and it was so lovely. It's got um, like a real delicate, thin pink pinstripe running through of the henning bone. I would love like a whole suit made out of this, a pencil skirt with a matching jacket. It is like a power suit, isn't it? Well, you could dress up if you want here, Kat. She says, oh, I don't get a chance to dress up here. Yes, you do. Although um, we are wearing flipper, uh, flippers, slippers and flip flops. Just eight pounds ninety nine. This is your hunter's tweed, and can you see what I mean about that real delicate pink stripe, which is lovely. I must say our tweeds are phenomenal quality. Um, I think we've done some hats with these with our Faye. We did a like a Peaky Blinder style hat, didn't we? But that's really really nice. That's just eight pounds ninety nine pence. I'm going to whiz on because I know that it's quarter two already. Um, the cords we've got. Um, three different style cords. This one, which is the dress behind me, if you've spotted the dress, this was done with Adele on her birthday show. This is the ultimate autumnal dress. Such a beautiful fabric. Be aware when you're cutting this out, it does have a uh, nap to it. So make sure that you are cutting it in the right direction. I suppose nobody's gonna see, but you can feel it. You can definitely feel which way this uh, this fabric runs. Just 849, lovely print. It's got a really um, vintagey feel to it actually, isn't it? So there's the top of the dress. That was a so different pattern. And it looks beautifully, it looks really beautiful um, when it drapes. It's got a great drape to it. That's just eight pounds and 49 pence for your rose pavilion fabric. And how beautiful is that? It is a gorgeous colorway and it's a corduroy, but a very lightweight one. So if you are making that transition from a cotton, if you've just done a simple cotton dress, maybe for summer, 
and you're worried about working with something that's a, a heavier weight fabric. If you go with something like this, it really behaves itself. It's not going to slip and slide under your sewing machine and it, it's, it's not too heavy. You're not going to have to change your needle. You're not going to have to change your foot. You're not really going to have to change much about it because it's still a lightweight cord. Um, we've got a couple of others which will look great again in the, the patterns that we, uh, that we saw earlier. You can use a cord for the jacket pattern as well. I think these would make lovely little dungarees. I'm surprised that this is still in stock actually. This is your rouge. It's like a really lovely tulip print, which is so cute, ditzy tulip print. For little children's garments as well. It's such a lovely little ditzy print that's in your rouge and it's again a cord. Eight pounds, 49 a half meter for your Lulworth Hall rouge. They're all 140 wide, if you want to check on your pattern, dressmaking with fabric, um, but the cords and lightweight cord. Um, I don't know if this is fine as a needle cord or is it a needle cord? I'm not sure, but it's uh, really nice and lightweight and you're not going to have to change too much with your sewing machine. If you are a beginner, they're really lovely fabrics to work with. And they just take you ready for autumn, don't they? It's not like you're wearing full knitted woolly jumpers, but you just need something that you can layer with. So if you're wearing like a polo neck top and a pair of like a, I'm thinking like a dungaree skirt style, that would look really lovely. I think we've got a dungaree pattern on the website actually. 8.49 half meters again it's 140 wide 145 wide sorry um, and it's that lovely fern green which is like um, a, a really beautiful green actually I know this was Adele's favorite type in pattern preacher or just pinafore you'll find it on the website pattern preachers are really really lovely quality patterns as well We've got one other dressmaking fabric that I want to show, which is your suede. Well, I say suede, it's um, a polyester, 100% polyester, um, but it feels so soft, it feels like a suede. It's going to be really, really nice again with the, the dress that we had in the background, or using it as a contrasting fabric. If you do want to have a bit of a play with colour blocking, uh, we were talking about that with the dress. You could have this as a contrasting tie, you could have it as the turnips on sleeves, you could have it for pockets, a waterfall jacket would be nice, or just a simple sort of gilet, because it's got a really, really beautiful drape to it. A nice skirt as well, this would be a really lovely skirt quite a floaty skirt like what you're wearing today cat autumnal skirt she's got a floaty autumn skirt on today in fact we're all wearing very sort of autumnal colors today aren't we paul didn't get the memo he's looking very summery oh no he's wearing brown trousers uh do you want to do the denims we've got the darker the darker blue which is like your classic autumn denim blue pair of denim jeans or if you're brave or if you've had a go at making jeans I know there are so many tutorials out there and there's lots of great patterns for jeans it's always scared me but that is one thing I can I really really struggle to get to fit me is a pair of jeans a good fitted pair of jeans it's really difficult to find a flare, a flared jean would be nice bootleg and flare jeans are coming back in very in fashion say goodbye to your skinny jeans of trying to wiggle into your jeans my husband's not going to be pleased, is he? He literally wears the skinniest fitting jeans. He can't wear flares. <laughs> I was like, I can't imagine him wearing flares. He might do. Just four ninety nine and a half meter. That's your eight ounce. He absolutely loves cowboy boots. I must say that he loves cowboy boots and cowboy hats. When we went to Vegas. Um, yeah, he loved all the cowboy boots and things. <laughs> uh, I do paint a funny picture of him, don't I? Right, this is the lighter colour. Which actually, do you know what? Let me put this with like your polyesters, with your, um, your suede. If you mix it in with the lighter colours, it actually still gives that really nice autumn but yet not wintry feel. I think this is really, really nice with some trims. You could put some lace trims on there. Uh, you could put some, uh, I'm thinking like, what's it called? Like your frills. Now I'm going really cowboy, like fringing. That'd look amazing. 
four ninety nine. That's your light blue denim cotton. It's the same weight again. It's your medium to heavy weight denim. Just get put a denim needle into your machine, and you'll be ready to go. You'll be flying. Um, is there anything else that I need to mention? One more bundle that we do need to do for grey hearts at the front here. Yeah. So you're getting a Lewis and Irene fabric and it's got a really lovely silver fleck that's running through it. Really lovely silver fleck that's running through it. So that would be absolutely perfect with this. It comes with half a metre of the silver as well. Comes with half a metre of silver. £8.99, two half metre pre-cut. It does go really, really well, in fact, with the next hour. I would stock up on this now. Remember that price, $8.99. Just shimmy, 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 shimmy. So you can see the two colours. Uh, $8.99 for a whole metre of fabric. Remember this when we bring you the next bundles in Jules's hour. We have got so much to do. Spend the next few minutes checking out your basket. We haven't even had time to do colouring in. Oh, brilliant. Can we do some colouring in? Shall I go over to the other side? Or I can do it here. I can do it here. Kat's going to get it for me. Thank you. So, this is the Woodland Colour Me In panel, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's got little Bambi. Well, I say Bambi. It's got a deer. It's got a, a little hedgehog. It's got an owl. It's got squirrels. It's got beehives. It's got lovely floral prints. Sorry, I'm getting into a right mess here. Let me move this across. The honey bear. Oh, look at this. I mean, you have got so many different prints. It's 140 centimetres by 50. Now, you could choose to cut these out and applique them onto different projects, couldn't you? You don't need to keep them all together. Um, or you could put them into... We've seen people making teddy bears out of these Calibian panels. We've seen people applique them onto jackets and clothes. We've seen somebody making bags out of them, notebook covers or table mats. You can uh, odour coat it and use it as a play mat. £5.99 for the panel on its own. We've got some options of some pens as well. If you do want to get some pens to go with, these aren't open. Can I open some? Which one do you want me to open? Any? Creative colours. Let me go for an orange. So, to, op to start it off, what you'll need to do is shake it for probably about 20 seconds or so. These ones are your extra fine tips. So, these are going to be really, really good for any of your more intricate detailing. You get black, you get purple, you get blue, you get pink, you get green, and you get orange, which are all lovely autumnal colours. So give it a really good um, shake, and you can see it's a real extra fine tip. Then what you need to do is just give it a dab. If it's not coming through, keep shaking. Keep shaking, 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 shaking. And you will, you will find, it's probably because we're running out of time that it's... Um, it's not going to play ball today. Keep giving it a good shake. You don't need to just use these on fabric. The great thing about them is you can use them on ceramics, you can use them on glass, you can decorate pebbles with them, you can decorate uh, candle holders, you can even decorate shoes or surfboards if you want. Surfboards, mobile phone covers. Oh, here we go. So then, once you've given it a really good shake, bit of a dab on the end, you can see straight away this is a brilliant one, actually, because you can get really close and fine. I've not seen these absolute extra fine nibs before. Sometimes they're, um, they are quite thick, which, don't get me wrong, it's great if you're, you're just slapping on loads of colour. But if you do want to get around these more intricate parts, you've got some lovely, lovely colours in here. Obviously, his honey's got to be orange, hasn't it? His honey pot's got to be orange. Um, but you've got some lovely autumnal colours. And then if you do find that you've done lots and lots of colouring and it's starting to, to lose its ink, give it another shake, just like I did then, and it will come through again. So they do last a long time. I mean, I've done so much colouring with these. It's quite funny. You know, earlier on when we said, um, me and Jules were saying, 
don't tell people that we we don't work hard. We go home and say, oh, we could cook the dinner because I've had a really hard day at work. Whereas actually, the reality is, is I've spent a lot of time colouring in. I find it really therapeutic. I think I find it really mindful. Whether you be, you know, doing this with, with children or whether it is just something that you find really therapeutic. What about adding some stitching into these? You could also put some embroidery stitches in between. So the panel on its own, as I said, is so affordable. It's printed exclusively for us and it's only £5.99 and you've got so many different little um, pictures. They've got a nice thick black line around them all as well so you can nice and easily colour um, round where you want. You've got a deer here, you've got little smiley caterpillars, your acorns and leaves and all sorts. Perfect for all of your autumn makes, only £5.99. That's your colour me in panel. So the other pens, I'm not going to open them because I know we're running out of time. But your metallic colours are great as well. They've got a slight sort of metallic shimmer to them. So for Christmas makes, these are going to be really, really lovely. Now I don't need to press this at all. You just need to leave it to dry and then it will become colour fast after, um, let me see how many hours. I think it says about 24 hours you normally leave it and then it, you can chuck it in the wash and it'll be absolutely fine. But uh, they they are, they do then become, as I say, um, water resistant, well, not water resistant, just um, colour fast. Is that the right word? So you've got your gold, silver, it sets the colour basically. Some of the pens you have to iron on to make them uh, set. You've got the gold, you've got the silver, you've got the pink metallic, purple metallic, like a jade green metallic, which is gorgeous. And you've also got your blue. I think you're going to have so much fun with these. Maybe if you've got an old lampshade that's just a plain colour that you want to personalise or you want to make your own. Um, if you do want to personalise anything, what about caps and t-shirts, uh, just a plain tote bags? This is the extra fine again. This is the same um, tip as you saw with the, with the uh, orange, which is a really lovely fine tip. It's only 2.3 millimetres, so you're going to be able to get into all of those hard to reach areas. And then if you want, um, uh, no, these aren't thicker actually. These are the, again the same extra fine ones, the 2.3 millimetres. Uh, more of these sort of primary colours, black, white, blue, green, yellow and red, more of your primary colours for 19.99 and they will last a long 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 time so it just says they're a water-based pigment ink um, shake about 20 times with the cap on prime by pressing three or four times until the ink flows um, if the flow weakens then of course repeat just stages one and two um, but I'm trying to see where it says about leaving it, but I'm sure if you just leave it overnight, if you do it overnight, then it will be completely dry. It depends how much you're using, I suppose. £19 and £99 for all six different colours. Lots of the items in the bundles are now extremely limited from today's autumn show. So check out your baskets over the next couple of minutes. If you've already purchased something today, then it's definitely worth having a look on the web and seeing what else you can add to your order as you've only got one PMP to pay all day long. We've got Jules coming back up and we are gonna get everybody kitted out with all their storage options and show you just how far our fat quarter panels can go. Uh, I mean, we've this is just a snapshot of how much you can make. Pot holders, storage tubs, uh, fabric holders, lovely little trays, We'll be talking all things storage right after the break. Don't go anywhere. We're back with Jules after this. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. 
every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the Watch Live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. It's so great to be here and part of the Sewing Street family. I'm local, I'm only down the road in uh, Warwickshire. Uh, I started sewing many years ago uh, when I was very young, doing uh, lots of art and painting and eventually I went into textiles and I really enjoyed doing the two together. I had then had a bit of a break. Uh, something you don't know about me maybe is that I spent many years in the Royal Air Force and eventually in uh, the police as well. And then I went full circle and I've come back to uh, my happy place of sewing, and uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, my be best sewing tip is measure twice and cut once. I have chipped up a couple of times by uh, not measuring properly and I do always regret it. So now I always measure twice, cut once. Anyway, I really hope to be with you again soon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Did you know that if you shop with Sewing Street, you're only going to pay one lot of postage all day? That's one payment of £3.95, no matter what you're buying. And you can check out as many times as you like without having to pay another delivery charge. So shop online at www.sewingstreet.com or you can order via our call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello, my name's Fiona Hesford and I'm founder of Sew Girl. I'm based down in Worthing on the south coast of England. And I've got a range of sewing patterns which I've developed over the last few years, which are projects for loose fitting clothing, everyday simple garments, things that I really love to wear myself and I'm going to be bringing you them to Sewing Street over the next few months so I look forward to seeing you then. Bye! Welcome back, it's that time again. I don't know how it's going so quick. Since we've been in our new studio I do think the time's gone a lot quicker, do you? These shows fly by, absolutely fly by. This hour we've got another gorgeous project for anybody who is new to sewing we've sort of been focusing on you today with the projects or i say that even if you are a more experienced sewer these are going to be really lovely nice quick projects to be able to achieve this book since we launched back in february 14th um, has been one of the most popular books that we've that we've had I will show you all through this. Oops, sorry, crash bank. Um, Salami Sue. You've got 25 quick and easy projects. And I mean, they're 
beautiful projects, all very, very useful projects as well, all nice gift ideas for people. So, in here, you've got loads of projects for just £12.99. pence. Let's have a look and a dive through. We're going to be doing some of the storage pots that you see on the front. But more sort of talking about how to use your fat quarters and, and how far that they can go. So talking about your sewing box to start off with, things that you might need, um, different fabrics that you might come across, different tools and ones that are more gadgety or ones that are essential, things that you might invest in as you move up to a more an intermediate sewer. Um, and then nice things to add to your wish list, which would be lovely. Things about your sewing machine and troubleshooting it. Things are, it's breaking down all of the different points on, um, on the sewing machine. And in fact, actually, this is a Genome machine that they're, they're focusing on, which is very, very similar to all of our Elners that we're looking at there under the same umbrella. Um, then going through um, fabric and measuring your, your fabric accuracy, reading a pattern, setting yourself up for sewing, which I absolutely love. And then we get into the projects gives you lots of great hints and tips along the way you've got a lovely neck pillow in here nice gift ideas little coasters even using felt and non-woven fabrics working with different uh, fabrics straight away not just you know your cottons pin cushions even working with a bit of leather in there no thank you um, dog toy rope bowl I love these and they're really really simple to do as well it's a great project um, you've got the plant pot bags, which are the ones that we're going to be looking at today with Jules. You've got really lovely clear instructions, but I think they're great for storage pots as well, aren't they? Really good for storage pots. Little card wallets. Not, we're all going a bit more sort of cashless at the moment, aren't we? I've simply been taking out either my, my card or just my phone with the, the, um, the contactless pay. So I, I haven't been taking my big purse with all of my, all of my money and change and things in. So that's a really nice little handy pocket, uh, little handy project slippers oh how, how about doing some nice little spa slippers I've been wearing my slippers today I was very envious yes was it last week Kat, that you turned up in your slippers and I was like Saturday oh it was Saturday it was a weekend so it was okay so is it not acceptable that I've got my slippers on today it is very very early in our defense when we arrive here and um, it's just nice to just be nice and comfy. We feel very much at home here now. Can you tell? We're all in our slippers. Um, the cloud cushion you probably recognise from our old set. Where's this gone? During the move, we haven't lost it, have we? We had that always on our on our set um, when I used to give you the weather forecast for the day. Um, eye mask. Oh, we wondered where this was. We've had this before as well. This should be. This is the one that we were saying. What book is the autumn leaves in? Oh, good throw. Look. There you go. How lovely is this? Oh no, more of this one, please. More of this one, please. You must have seen this, Paul. This was always, this was always, um, oh yeah, because it was always on the sunny side. But actually, no, Paul's never seen the, um, that's Paul. That's me. Paul. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. You're very positive today. Positive Paul. And um, so we've got the garland. I'm going to whiz through the rest. You've got some folk art um, in, in an embroidery hoop. You've even got a bit of toy making in here. So you're going to really jump up on your skill levels. But it's all designed to be nice little quick projects. Or um, don't worry, it's not a rush. Like I said before, it's not going to turn into a pumpkin at midnight if you haven't done it in half an hour. But uh, it, they're all designed to be nice quick projects and working with different textures, different fabrics. Uh, and seeing the, the, you know, the different problems that might occur and how to rectify them. Camera strap, that's nice. You could use that as a guitar strap or, mu you know, for a musician. They're great. Travel keepsake bag, maybe going on your autumn walks, collecting any... Um, oh, there was loads the other day when I walked with my mom, and there were loads of these really long acorns, and they were beautiful. I was like, right, I need to come with a proper bag next time and collect these, because you could paint them or you could spray them. You could even just have them as a, a sort of display and decorate them. They look lovely. So, yeah, things like that would be great. They were, they were fully flourished. They were really big acorns. They were lovely. Well, yeah, you have to be a bit careful of that. Putting it all together, nice bags. <laughs> Can you guess what Paul's saying? Um, a bit of applique in there as well. So you're getting all of your patterns in the back of the book, in the pouch. Whether you choose to cut them out, you can keep them all nice and neatly in there, or whether you want to trace around them, um, you can. 
plenty of projects to be getting on with. Maybe over lockdown, I've heard quite a few people say, I've just lost my sojo a bit. I've been doing lots of sewing over the last few months, or I just haven't felt like sewing. Projects like this that are quick, and achievable, especially if you're a beginner, I find that if I see a result quite quickly, then I'm more likely to try something else. If it's something that, oh, it's going to take me a long time, like I said about the series, sometimes if I watch an episode and I know it's a quick and easy episode, then I'll watch another. Whereas if someone says to me, do you want to watch this film? It's three hours long. I'm like, no, I don't. I've got time. Whereas quick and easy projects are great. So I love this book. We've got a few bundles to show you. Do you want to do the one metre bundles before we do our fat quarter panels? Should we do our nice smelly fabric? <laughs> it, I kept saying flavoured yesterday, I got into trouble because they were like, don't say it's flavoured, we don't want to have complaints there, everyone's trying to eat their fabric. Um, it's not flavoured, it's scented and it smells like chocolate. This is like a lovely posh box of chocolates, isn't it? Um, all with the nice little patterns on. It's Lewis and Irene and it literally smells of chocolate. It's amazing. Half a metre of this, I can't help but smell it even though I know exactly what it smells like. I just love that. It makes me hungry though, especially this sort of time. It's, um, yeah, it's not great. Uh, Paul, we were, we were trying to be like the, the devil in his ear, tempting him to go and get a Pinot Chocolat this morning. Not a Pinot in a bottle of wine. What is it called? Pano Chocolat. Not a Pinot. <laughs> um, and then you've also got your lovely aqua swirl fabric. <laughs> So you've got your two half metres pre-cut <laughs> for just £11.49. pence. Then we've also got it in the pinks. Just checking. Yeah, still smells of chocolate. It's like a lovely hot chocolate. It's really nice. Um, so this one again has got lovely posh chocolates on here. The, uh, the hot chocolate bundle, very, very popular from earlier on, actually. If you want to get these to go with as well, just 11 49 great price, and you're getting two designer fabrics. And we'll have a look at those in the storage uh, storage boxes that, that Jules has made as well. She's made loads. She's going to be carried away with the sewing this week, which is great. Do you know what? I said to Jules, she has gone above and beyond with her prep this week. It's been amazing. Um, this one is interesting. So earlier on, I said... Keep your eyes peeled over the next hour because you'll spot this fabric. It looks lovely with the silver. Again, looks really, really nice with your Lewis and Irene reds as well. Half a metre of each. That's your heart storage box train fabric. We've got loads of fabric. So I'm just whizzing through these quite quickly. But keep them in mind. Uh, your double dots as well. This one. And I suppose... I mean, it's up to you because it's half a metre of each. You could do it whichever way you want. So you could have this as your outer, you could have this as your lining, mix and match them. 11.49, that's so good, isn't it? All of those different colours, just £11.49. We've also got some of our pre-printed panels, which are exclusive to us. And uh, you've got big fat quarters on here. This is BKUU59. You've got a fat quarter that looks like this. And they're big fat quarters as well. You can see they are really, really big fat quarters because they're printed on um, a big printer that can print extra wide fabric, 140 wide. And you are gonna get so many projects. If you're getting the book today, you'll actually be able to have a bit of a look through which ones you want to do. And with this fat quarter panel, it's gonna go a really, really long way. There's the other fat quarter. In fact, you get four. They're 70 centimetres by 50 centimetres. Sorry, I'm talking very quickly because I'm whizzing through so we can spend as much time as possible with jewels. This one's lovely, quite a retro -y print. And then your spot as well, which isn't a spot. It looks like a spot from there. <coughs> They're little ditzy flowers, which are really, really cute. That's just £14.99. The next one is KLUU06, please, Paul. <clears throat> right, got a little frog in me throat. Let's do this one. Oh, maybe I do need a cup of tea then. Uh, this is your little square dots in your baby blue. You've also got all the little flecks in mustard. That's really, really nice. Then we've also got, oh wow, these are great bright colours, aren't they? 
They are really, really vibrant. You've got your pink, you've got the blue, which you've got little Vs. And then you've also got your square dots, all four fat quarters for £14.99. Um, <laughs> M-H-U-U-892, please, Paul. Do you know who I feel like? Um, what's her name? Rachel Riley on Countdown, when she's like, I'll have another consonant, please, Paul. Oh, no, she doesn't ask, does she? She just puts it there. She's Paul in this situation. Uh, okay. <laughs> so there's nothing like Countdown at all. I don't know why it reminded me. 14 and 99. It's your ditsy bitsy. This is so lovely, isn't it? Oh, this reminds me of something. It reminds me of another fabric. It's really lovely, isn't it? I can't think which one it is, but it is really designer. It's lovely. Um, the gingham print as well. And then you've also got your floral and your spot. £14.99 exclusive to us. We've got one other before we go over to Jules. XTUU86, please, Paul. Oh, we've had a picture from. Hi, Carol. Carol, we've got your picture. We'll show it in a second. Um, gingham print in your lovely lilacs. Oh, I love having all your pictures in. Send them in, send them in. Um, this one's your lovely grey spot. Wow, grey background with a white spot. And then you also get your lovely purple with white flowers and your white with grey flowers. £14.99. They're all big fat quarters, which we'll talk to uh, Jules about. So this is what we are making. Oh, no, 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 no. This isn't what we're making. <laughs> This is Carol's cat. <laughs> oh, hi, Savannah. Are you listening to me on Sewing Street? I wonder whether she had. Apparently, she's quite scratchy. Had, did she say she's quite scratchy, or did you just make that up? Oh. No, she's not scratching at the screen. <laughs> oh, she's loving my voice, actually, cat. I think you'll, I think you'll be um, upset to hear. <gasps> Hello, Heather. Heather, we're going to have a look into your uh, inquiry, your message as well. We'll have a look into it, which is exciting. So, yeah, these are what we're making. Oh, Savannah is so cute. Uh, so, storage boxes, lovely trays. This is going to go a really long way, isn't it, Jules? Absolutely. The panel that you've got there, I couldn't believe how many boxes in various different sizes and the pot. I, it's just like, oh, and another on. one I can get another one. And I pretty much used all of it, as I did with the Lewis and Irene. Um, and then by the time I got to the double dots, I just like maxed myself out of it. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not surprised you've made so much. Um, how was it working with the, have you worked with these panels before? Um, no, I hadn't. Um, I, no, I don't think I have, actually. It was the first time I'd cut up a fat quarter panel. Um, really easy to do, really nice fabric. I got on really well with it, yeah, not a problem. It's slightly heavier weighted than the Lewis and Irene, I feel. It yeah. just feels a little bit more substantial. Um, but it worked really well, not a problem through the machine. Yeah, Brilliant. Good. And also, the other thing about that is you've got lots of white borders mm -hmm. um, because of the size of the material on the press, as you said. So that's really useful. You can put... Um, well, that doesn't go to waste. Need white, don't you? Sashing, brilliant. Absolutely, there's so, yeah. loads, and that won't go to waste at all. Fantastic. No, not at all. Um, so the book. Let's start with talking about the book actually, because uh, I I know that you were nodding away when I was saying it, it is brilliant to have something that is achievable and quick and quick easy. Quick fix. Yeah. Did you lose your sojo at all over uh, that? It was, wasn't too bad for me because I got lots of variety, and obviously being here, you're given the yeah. projects that you do. Um, so that was quite nice because sometimes you can't think of what to do and then it lands on your door say, oh, well, I need to do that. So that's yeah. all right. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people had. Um, I think they just got fed up of making certain items. Yeah. <sighs> How much elastic can you use? Um, and so 
uh, they needed just a little bit of uh, umph to do something else and these are really great so you know half an hour I if you want to take your time obviously you can take your time and it will take a little bit longer but yeah it doesn't have to be an onerous project by any means at all and I love these storage boxes I think whether can we have a look at some of the, the shapes that you've got there so these are more like your trays which I think are yeah. called fabric trays aren't yeah. they so this is um, the size that's in the book so it's a 10 by 10 square you start off with mm -hmm. and then you um, sew and uh, get it it's probably about eight uh, ish in inside um, so you can scale that up and down the edges here I've done them all the same size on every one apart from the little mini one which I don't know if you can this is see so right adorable at, right at the top so these are all one and a half inch and this is a one inch because I thought if I do a one and a half inch you won't get anything <laughs> at all in there but that I thought was quite nice as a candle holder candle holder a thimble yeah. you could keep in or, or you can yeah. you know put jewellery in them and things like that I don't or know jewelry, about anybody else yeah. out there but I have a, a husband who Anything that is a receptacle, he will use the receptacle. <laughs> yeah. So keys, coins, whatever it might be. So these are quite nice to have on your windowsill. There Absolutely. you go, love. Knock yourself out. <laughs> good idea. Really good idea. So, yeah, it's, um, I, I was really enjoyed doing them. And in fact, um, my daughters quite like them as well. So they were having a go. So, you oh, know. Brilliant. It's like <laughs> so someone who is new to sewing, these are quite good, sort of quick, easy projects, aren't they? And, and yeah. I like the fact that, that it's all about the fabrics as well. Yes. So I, what I quite liked was the fact that they're obviously they're tonal fabrics fabrics and you'd normally think well that's got to be on the inside because it looks like a lining fabric but no because you can do it both ways and it, yeah. you can see both of them I, I really like that um, so you don't have I'm to make that decision of oh which one do I want as my main and which no. one do I want as my lining because like you both you can do both, both you can put your chocolates in there so um, oh yeah so these kind of scale down by two inches so that's a ten and eight and a six on there so you can do what you like I, I didn't quite have enough time to do some rectangular mm -hmm. ones I was gonna have a go at rectangular oh, and, cool. and triangular ones because I thought they look quite nice as well because it is such a simple method um, you can adapt it yourself without too much trouble, I don't think. It's good. As a lot of us are thinking more now, of course, about sustainability and using less plastic. Pla instead of plastic tubs, they're really lovely storage boxes that I think are going to be great gift ideas for somebody. Or you could almost make them as like a little hamper, put some, you know, bits and bobs in there as yeah. gifts to people yeah, as well. Yeah, that would be ideal as a gift wrap, wouldn't it? You could put like a bar of soap in there yeah. or something like that. And the beauty of this is if you did have them lined up on your windowsill, um, you can make them quite easily to mix and match and tone with your room, but also they can be washed. Absolutely, you good know, idea. Dusting is a nightmare, isn't it? So you can just throw those in the washing machine and that's perfect. Great, so, yeah, so how, how do you make them then? How so, does it start? Um, you've got, well, you can... Uh, the, the pattern is uh, initially for the storage tray, but it's quite easy to gr uh, kind of grade up, grade up and do your um, little pouches as well. Right. So I thought we'd start on the tray uh, and then see how far we got, really. Right. <laughs> yeah. So the um, interliner that I used for these was just a medium weight interfacing, which um, in the book it recommends you to use a medium weight interfacing. But having done the panel earlier on, uh, the um, cover earlier on, I did have some H640. So I thought, well, I'll try it in that live on air. Okay. Let's do it. Um, just to so it, see how it stood up. I suspect it's going to be a bit more um, bouncy. Yeah, these are great, but they, uh, as I say, so we're, if you, you do need want something it in it, uh, I think, with those. Whereas, yeah. whereas if you're using them for a storage pot to keep your marking tools and things like that, it might be better using H640. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, so I'm going to do that um, with the light blue fabric at the moment. Um, so what you'll do is for the storage tray, you'll cut a 10 inch. You can choose what you like, but it, 10 inches what it's gauged for. So 10 inches of the lining, 10 inches of the outer, whichever way around you want to do it, and 10 inches of your um, interfacing. And uh, you attach the interfacing to your outer mm -hmm. to start off with um, it, it was kind of it said that in the book and I, I thought well yeah okay that's fine but um, you could do it to the inner as well okay so it doesn't it doesn't matter which whichever way around you want to do it inner or outer it doesn't make any difference <laughs> your preference uh, so you attach that first of all then the next thing is simply putting the two together and sewing all the way around just as you would do for 
kind of any uh, backing uh, quilts or anything like that. You just sew them all the way yeah. around and leave a turning gap like you would do on a bag. Yeah, I suppose so it's not too much of an intricate size that you don't need to worry about leaving a big space. No, um, it, it will kind of squash in. Yeah. Um, and you're going to, the next thing will be that you turn it inside out and then you seal the edges anyway. So don't worry too much about it. But I worked with about a quarter of an inch seam mm -hmm. um, on this machine. It'll be whatever the foot yeah. to. Time to do. Tally <laughs> sewing. I'm so, yeah, I'm so organised. So. A lady messaged in earlier on about the H640 actually, by the way, which you just saw the graphics for a moment ago, um, and asked whether you found the H640 can get um, sort of, did she ask if it could get sort of gummed upon your needle or stuck in the feed dogs? It doesn't, gummed no. Upon the, no, it doesn't at all. No, not a problem at all. Um, Do you find you need to clean it um, a bit You need more? to clean your bobbin race, um, bobbin race fairly regularly. So that's where your bobbin sits. Uh, in and around there you need to clean that because it does get a bit dusty when you're using any wadding yeah. so that should be part of your kind of you should do routine. really how should, often do you clean be. your machine or I do you yeah do? yeah I do because my machine doesn't like it if I don't basically it'll stop working yeah then I've had to take the whole thing apart so I don't really want to do that so I I'm pretty regular with that sort of cleaning not any other sort of cleaning but <laughs> <laughs> machine cleaning is important absolutely uh, so yeah it's different but you um, have you left yourself a gap? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going around there yet, but yeah, sorry. Just checking because yeah. I know I'll be chatting to checking, you. And checking. You'll be like, oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've done that before, I think. Right. Okay. There we are. So. Yeah, you've done a few of these before, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> what? Leave, not leaving the gaps. <laughs> oh no, just to me in the trays. You've just become checking. a bit of a wizard, at it, I suppose, don't you? Can I just say these? Go First on. time I've encountered them today. Brilliant. Love do you them. Like them. They're almost falling in my bag, but I wouldn't do that. That's very rude. <laughs> So we've done all of that. Now, you've got a couple of things you can do. You can either trim off the corners mm -hmm. and turn it inside out, um, depending on how much kind of wadding you've got. Uh, I normally don't. I normally do a dressmaker's corner. So put your thumb in, you fold your first seam down and your second seam across. Oh. Pinch that and then push it through. And it should give you a fairly sharp corner, depending on how, how thick, thick your wadding you. is. It's, it's not quite sharp enough for me today, so we might just cut the corners off today. But that's one way of doing um, a turn if you want to. Well, like you say, if you're probably using the interfacing as opposed to the, f uh, the fleece, yeah, you'd probably get away with it. Well, all of the other boxes, that's what I did. Right. Uh, and they're all pretty, well, fairly sharp on the corners. So you don't need to trim away the rest of your excess just at the corners? Yeah. Again, I haven't done it with this, so it might prove that we've... We perhaps should have done, but I'm not going to. Just because when you're at home, this is what you do, isn't yeah. it? You do it, and if it doesn't work, you do something else. But I'm not undoing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing an undo today. So we get to all the corners, turn it all through. And actually, uh, my favourite fabric was the pink, Lewis and Irene. And I didn't know quite why. And then when you said this morning about the chocolate, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, that's now what it, it was. makes sense. When I was... <laughs> Does it still smell of chocolate after you've yeah. worked with it? Yeah. Yeah. So good. And I, I hadn't clocked that until you said, and I thought, oh, that's no, why I haven't. I've talked about this fabric loads of times. And it was only when Delphine came in last week and she said, when I was pressing this, kept thinking, am I going crazy or is this Or do I chocolate? smell chocolate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty okay, I think. So now what we need to do is we need to press it. Uh, and what you want to do is to get the seams kind of lining up so you can see I'm rocking backwards and forwards on the seam to start off with because I want that to be pretty sharp if I okay. can because that's what you're going to see at the top um, I mean again it's you that sees it if you're giving it a gift then it, that's what makes it homey isn't it and whilst you're doing it I'm going to press around it and just turn in the open oh, piece yeah, good idea. and then we're going to top stitch so you don't need to hand stitch that down, that's going to get no. trapped in your stitching anyway. Yeah. She says, hopefully, <laughs> when I've whizzed around. Oh, this is, I like this. Lots of project uh, products I'm going to be buying when I get home. I know, this is it. It's <laughs> dangerous you coming here, isn't it? Because you get to play with all the toys and the gadgets. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, well, you can choose which side you want inside and which side you want outside. 
What do you fancy? Chocolate inside. Chocolate the box. inside. The box. Right. Inside the box. Because you see, I don't think it makes any difference where you put the no. lining. To be fair. So let's do a stitch all the way around just to seal that gap. We'll have when you're top around. stitching, how close to the edge do you sew generally? Um, I try and <laughs> about an eighth of an inch in okay. old money. Um, so two, a couple of millimetres, I reckon, and if we can. You haven't altered, you don't alter stitch length or anything like that? No. no I just give it a whirl. Good. <laughs> Sounds very slapdash, doesn't it? But um, I, I keep everything the same or as much as possible the same, just because I know what will happen. I get up and go and do something else and I come back and it's completely different. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when I've, um, I'm on my machine, if I put my quarter of an inch foot on, I have to change the stitch length. And if I change the stitch length and I forget, I break my needle because it hits the foot. Right. So every time I get up, I flick the foot off. And that's the only way I can remember, because otherwise I would just be breaking needles all over the place. <laughs> That's a nice new fresh needle in there, actually, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I did break it this morning. <laughs> I will admit, there was a quarter of an inch foot on, and I didn't want that on. I wanted the open toe one, um, because we wanted to look at where we were going. And, uh, yeah. It's good to know that even, you know, the demonstrators, everyone who comes in, we all make the same mistakes. <laughs> well, as long as you don't dock my pay for making the mistakes, it's all right, I'll carry on making them. <laughs> <laughs> don't. There's bosses in the gallery. Can you hear them? Mm. It's all right, they're not watching this bit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're nearly round to the other side. So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to mark the space for the corners, so the little pieces that are going to go like the wings at the side. Um, and then in order to make the box stand up, you're going to do another square of stitching inside. So to do that, Take your um, grid, ruler, whatever you want to use. I'm going to stitch it on the inside. Um, so you'll be marking an inch and a half from the corner. So if I get that lined up using my mat and find where my inch and a half is. So using the friction pen. Friction pens on the website. Brilliant, use them all the time. Another favourite product. So as you've marked it down, two things um, it's going to help you with. First of all, the square that you're going to be sewing in the middle. But second of all, when you're lining up your um, um, little tabs to mm -hmm. sew them over, you just need a point at which to, to hold it to sew it over. Right. So. I like your ring, Jules. You did not make that yourself. Yeah. Yes. You're so talented. <laughs> you, that was a playing moved, session. <laughs> now we've moved away from jewellery maker. We're like, you can't steal, Jules. <laughs> now it's a bit hard to steal you. But no, you should definitely... Um, <laughs> when, when we've got another 24 hours in, you uh, know, extra in a day, we might do that. I know. But it's always, it's kind of useful for Christmas presents and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, what came first, sewing or jewellery making? Uh, sewing. I've been sewing for a, a long while, like, yeah. you know, right from when I was little. Um, and then you kind of go through all, so I'm going to stitch around the square now. Where you where you Where I've just marked. Drawn. Okay. Um, so you go through all stuff, sorts of stuff, really. I think if you if you craft, you kind of dabble in Have all sorts of, of things. Thing. Yeah. Have you ever tried needle felting before? Yes, yeah. I've not done the worked uh, felting, but I have done the dry felting. Um, so yeah, I've done those. Um, I've made things like poppies and um, I made a very suspect looking bird. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the sheep like earlier. Like the sheep was yeah, yeah. You get your cat's sheep. And yeah, yeah. On, it so. kind of was a birdish sort of thing. <laughs> But um, yeah, so I've tried a few different things. Do you um, paper craft? Yeah. Yeah. I suppose when I got back into craft, so I'd, I've done like knitting and sewing for myself and for the family. Um, and then I got into doing stuff for myself, making cards, especially when you've got um, lots of friends that you're sending birthday cards to. That's it, so yeah. that sort of thing you get into, don't you? 
And then, yeah, you've got tools, you just try them out on all sorts of stuff, don't you? Like you say, in the crafting world, I think we all sort of dabble, dabble in everything. Because you dress make as well, don't you? Yeah. Um, not so much nowadays, uh, although I made, you know the um, blue material that we've got, which has got the white swallows on it? Yes. Um, I love that material and my, um, I thought I bought some just because you do buy material, don't you? Absolutely. Whatever. Uh, and my daughter went, oh, I like that, Mum. Well, what would you like? I love a pair of trousers, if you don't mind. Okay. So we did, ah. a, pair of <laughs> did a pair of trousers. So, yeah, do bits. Maybe. Now, I'm going to fold this in and just iron it down. Now, I know I've got a friction pen and I know I've just got to be a little bit careful there, but... Because you don't want to erase that just yet. Not totally, um, but I'm not too worried because the, the guidelines will help me anyway. And you know what? We're almost done. Gosh, they're really lovely and quick, yeah. aren't they? So you get that um, so that you've just got a little bit better purchase when mm -hmm. you're folding it over. There we go. And so the last thing Do you know what? I've just had a brain thought, and I'll forget if I don't say it now. If I use um, Thermalan, which yeah. is not the one with the metal running through, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. The one that anyway doesn't have the metal running through, the really compressed heat resistant one. Yeah. If I made these with that, I could put it in the microwave with my bowl of soup. You could. And have it because you know sometimes when you put something in the microwave and it gets really really hot on the bowl, you need like your caddy, your cover to, to and it's a heat resistant one. And yeah. like you say, you can chuck it in the wash. Yeah, you just got to be careful, as you say. You've got no metal in that at all. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll have a sparky microwave. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. There's one. <laughs> that that's, there's one that is a um, one that sort of has got the metal running through it, and then there is the one that doesn't. Yeah. Um, well, the June. June Taylor one has got metal in it, definitely. Right. Yeah. Um, but the other one, the thermal I don't think has. So you yeah. just need to double Have double a check. Have check on the Vaseline website. Yeah. yeah. Right now, so what I'm doing is um, I've got my two marks here, so I'm just making sure that I can line those up. Another clue is that you're you've got your corner piece that you've sewn at the bottom. Okay. Just take. I've got ordinary thread because I stupidly left my embroidery thread in the. Would, other room, so would you ideally use a embroidery I would, stain? yeah. Okay. Um, I've, so on these ones, uh, I've just picked a colour that I thought would look yeah. nice, contrast colour. I was sent black and I thought, oh no, I'm not using black, I'm using something else. Yeah. So I did. Um, so on this, I've got a blue cotton, which I've doubled over. So I've got kind of four, four strands of cotton, which will be okay. I think... The only challenge that I have that I'm having is that my needle is probably not quite as sharp as I might like it because it's um, it's a ball point needle, and because I've got a thicker wadding in here, um, so just practice, have a play, see Get what needle nice, goes through. Nice sharp yeah, needle. sharp needle, big eye, uh, and it should go through. Maybe like there. a quilting needle. Quilting. Oh, or maybe a bit longer than that. Maybe a tapestry. Tapestry. Yeah. Um, or an embroidery, wh whichever you've got that, that kind of works. Not the one that Kat's given you. <laughs> Thank you, Kat, but it's, yeah. Wait. I'm um, shallow. <laughs> so that's what you do. And literally, I've gone over maybe two or three times. Yeah. And then I'll go in to where I started from, just pull it through. Again, you can see it, wiggle it through. Um, and then just tie it on the inside. So if you go up your stitching, uh, and just pull it through and do a little knot. And literally, that's it. Once I've got that through there, that's that side done. I think you'll find loads of different uses for these. They're always going to be useful, aren't they, around the house? And actually, just looking at the thickness difference, that's standing now before I've even got the other corners on. So it, it is a bit more substantial. Ah, nice. So if you were that's going to, to use know. your bowl cosy, probably that would be better. But that's it. Amazing. Once had, we've done um, all the other four. We've had a message in from Roxanne. Roxanna, sorry. Could you put snaps on each corner and then you could have them flat and then pop yeah. them up with some snaps? Yeah, you could. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, definitely. Because I think there's another project in there that has, um, you said the card wallet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's got, and it will so show you how to snaps, snaps on. So 
Um, this book's really good because each project concentrates on a particular thing that you can do, you can learn from it. Right. So on the snap project, that would be the thing that you learn from that. We've got the um, the prim snaps and the little tool exactly like this actually. So that's a really good a good tip. And, and like you say, what I love about this book is that you've got a little bit of bag making, a little bit of quilting, a bit of hand stitching, a bit of embroidery, free motion, applique, toy making. Yeah. Got everything all really. Sorts of bits Covers and all the bases. Yeah. So I'm gonna whiz on. Do you Absolutely. Think we? How are we doing for time, Kat? So probably about 15 minutes? Yeah, okay, well let's let's challenge Annika then, as it were. Um, so on this one, you start off in a similar sort of way, so um, it's the kind of next row along on your project. Right. Um, you need two pieces which will be your lining and two pieces which are going to be the outer bag. And again, I don't really think it makes much difference which way round you do it, but the lining is not um, interfaced, whereas the outer is. So um, this one has got, the hearts have got um, little metallic a right way up, haven't they? On yeah, that, and they've so. got like a little silver fleck. Oh They're yes, really, really they pretty. Have. Not, I wouldn't say metallic, but a little silver fleck. Little kind of something. So let's make sure we get them all the same way up. So there we go. That's my lining's going to be that. And then um, this is going to be the outer. And this, it doesn't matter no, up or down, no does it? It's right to left on that one. So for this one, you need nine inch squares and a nine inch square will make um, the bigger bag at the end. And they're designed as pot holders, but you know what, you put whatever you like in them. Um, I did think you could probably make a little handle or a little loop that you can hang up on a rack and just attach it as you're t um, sewing the two together. So we can have a look at doing that maybe. Oh, lovely. They're good to keep all your, you know, your quilting clips. And yeah. you can multi-purpose like wonder clips in there or yeah. just little storage tells for your marking tools or yeah absolutely yeah. so what you do here and uh, you can see i was running out of wadding so i've just ironed it on in three rows it's fine um so back to back on your uh, both pieces with this one you just need to remember that's going to be the top and we're going to sew around the three sides now this is one of my favorite bag bottoms but it's done in a slightly different way because normally you cut out the squares before you start. This, she just sews around the whole lot. And I'm ah. thinking, that was a revelation because I would normally faff about with it, but I'm not going to anymore. So it's nice about, you know, listening to different, reading different books, different patterns, isn't it? If one does something different, you think, yeah. oh, that's a good way. Now, now even though you're going through two layers of fabric and two H640s. No, I'm just going to lengthen my stitch. Okay. And I'm going to go a bit slower because um, I've got exposed top and bottom haven't I with the mm -hmm. uh, with the wadding so let's just play with that oh I'm not going that slow though <laughs> <laughs> sorry slow but not slow and because I'm tucking the other wadding through but you know what if you can do it with all of these little challenging bits mm -hmm. you can do it quite easily at home when you've got the, the proper uh, amounts of fabric and everything. So, we go along I do love these little tubs. I think they're great. You know, if you've got um, just to have by your sewing machine, when you have those little loose bits and small scraps and things, whenever you finish yeah. your project, you've always got a big tidy up operation, haven't you? Whereas these, just to have, is almost like your little scraps and thin. And ones that you could have one that you're thinking, right, actually, that. They are done now. They're so small, I'm not going to be able to use them for anything. But if you have got little triangles, little squares that you've shown us some tips in the past, haven't you, of, of you know, scrap busting. Yeah. You can have your inch scraps, you can have your two, yeah. That's it, that you just put straight in there, ready to go. Yeah. That's a really good idea. And, and I know you said about the handle, but how about having them on like a hook, almost similarly to how we've, hang, we've hung our, our rulers up? Yeah. Because it's got that fold over, you could hang them and do another smaller loop that you hang and have them in the bathroom. Little, um, yeah, tubs for in the bathroom for your cotton wool and things like yeah. that. You could even odie coat them if yeah. you wanted waterproof something or other. Oh, yeah, paint brushes or makeup, storage yeah. tubs. Brilliant. There's so many different things that you can do with them. It's really cool. Okay, so we've got. And I quite, it's quite cute in the book because she says uh, on there, if you're not feeling brave, do your first cut on your lining. I thought that was quite cute <laughs> because 
some people are just a bit nervous about cutting yeah. into fabric really yeah. um, so again we're just going to mark in uh, now it depends where you take your mark from I took it from where I stitched um, but she advises I think it's an inch or it might be an inch and a half um, it doesn't really matter inch and a half um, and you mark into where you're going to cut it out and to be honest because <laughs> I know I don't want to faff about with rulers and stuff like that um, because of time but you'll you'll do different at home but you can just mark in and cut out you're kind of just doing this by your eye yeah I'm also you're working on really cutting mat looking at the yeah measurements that's a good idea and sometimes you're not in the place where you've got your stuff, are you? I would do it with scissors, though. As just opposed because, to um, a rotary. rotary cutter. Just because you're going into um, the middle, uh, into the fabric, if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, whereas when you've got a rotary cutter, sometimes it's trickier to stop. You don't want to be putting pins there and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Really? So it's not quite even. And you can even just match them up. Oh, good idea. So it doesn't look even at the bottom, but I'm looking at my stitching, where I've got my stitching, because I want them to fold through. So. So you do this on, uh, on this and also on your, um, on your outer. So if I finish this off, just in case we're we're on too far out of time. Yeah, we've got about five minutes. So what you'll do now is just pull it apart and open up your seams. So if you tuck your fingers in and just push to the side and open up your seams. Is this a boxy bottom? Yeah. I love doing this. It's just because it's the opposite way around to what you think it's going to be. Yeah. And when you cut it, you go, oh, that's worked. So then you would just sew across. And keep a similar sort of seam allowance. So if you've gone with a quarter of an inch, go with a quarter of an inch again. Whatever you do on one side, do on the other. Okay. And so if, you, if you've made it bigger, that's fine. Just do the same on the other side. And again, flatten your seams out. So you're opening them out. You're not pressing them to the side. I'm with you. No, opening and flat. I think on something like this, it just means that it um, stays just that little bit neater, a bit flatter. Okay, so there we go. So that's your linings or just check that you've caught everything that you need to catch. Mm -hmm. um, normally what you do is you turn out your bag and have your lining inside out. So that's why I've turned it back again. So let's um, do these corners as well. Take that as our template. That looks a bit more even. Maybe a bit more oomph with that. These would be nice actually to do with your William Morris um, fabrics, in fact quarters, did you see those? Yeah, they very are nice, nice, aren't they? Very nice. They'd be amazing, in fact if you want to do it with the lining and the contrasting, the complementary bundle that we had earlier on is now very limited, that'll sell out today, so if you do want that complementary bundle, which I know kind of struggled to put together anyway, didn't we? It was really limited on some of the fabric, so grab what you can, because I think we're gonna to struggle to put that bundle together anytime soon. We obviously will have all of those fabrics on reorder, and they are sort of our standard fabrics that we have on the, on the website anyway, our sort of staple fabrics. But putting the bundles together sometimes can prove difficult. Have a look back on the website from the, the bundles that we had in the last hour, you'll find them. And it's really nice to be able to see your fabric rather than just have it 
in your in the drawer you know waiting for that big project yeah. you might not have a big project it might not come along kind of thing so it's just nice to have it out on display i think yeah especially for useful things like the little plant pots are really lovely and storage tubs for your workroom some of your favorite fabrics it doesn't take much of your fabric does it no not at all i mean it could be the end of whatever you've been doing so if you've done your project and you've got a, a little scrap left uh, what can i do with it well we'll do this i mean you could even piece fabrics together you know yeah equally could you upscale these so you know once you've got this the size of them could you make them even bigger i think you could to a certain point so if this got too large you'd want to maybe put something a bit more solid in the bottom so maybe um a, a piece of card perhaps in the bottom or something like that yeah. just so it held a little bit better uh, but yeah there's no reason why not the basic principles that you're learning to do these or what you do bigger projects with anyway. So it's really nice, like we were saying before, kind of skill building. Um, you, I mean, box bottoms you use on all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So it's really nice to be able to do that. All right, so just trim away the images. Literally got a couple of minutes. Okay, so that will be that away round. I don't so think get right it sides together. Right sides together. So that's your um, outer, that's your inner. Just feed the one inside the other. The only thing you've got to do here is match your seams. Don't worry about anything else. Um, so if it's not quite even around the top, just make sure that your seams, again, open and flat. And you probably would like, um, because you've got a lot to kind of go around and manage mm -hmm. you probably would like to put a pin in there or a clip or a clip yeah good to yeah. have those layers yeah just to hold that steady while you make sure and you kind of feed it around and it's literally is just feeding things around to make it sit nicely so Oops. open that out okay i don't know shall we we got about a minute. I don't know because it's all going to go pear shaped now, isn't it? Oh well, it will when I don't do that. Oh no! You haven't got a Here clock, have you, Paul? No. Oh, my word. Can you imagine? Don't put a clock on me. That would be very mean. I've been nice to you today, Paul. <laughs> don't be mean to me. <laughs> I offered to make you a cup of tea. I didn't make one. But I did offer to. <laughs> it was the thought that counts. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, what didn't I do? What didn't I do? I didn't leave an opening in my seams, but I don't care because this is how I made all of the others and I just ripped the seam open later. Okay. Just because I was speed. So you want to go all the way around here? All the way around. So you're supposed to leave a bit of a gap in the bottom or the side or? In the anywhere. side seam. Yeah, in the side seam. But it's not a mistake because I did this on every one because I was like virtually chain piecing everything. And you can just literally snip a few yeah. stitches. So just get in and open the seam out a little bit as long as you've not uh, sewn it too rigidly i'm gonna slip through everything now aren't i just through the one layer are you doing this? just through my bag here just whilst you're doing that um can i show you the machine the book uh, it's learning to sew on your machine in 30 minutes I mean, it's a really good, quick and easy book to, to sort through with lots of great transferable skills. As Jules said, this is something that you're going to pick up and you'll be able to learn lots of different techniques that will reoccur again with lots uh, of different projects that you have, from bag making to toy making, um, even little dressmaking tips you'll learn along the way. Working with different fabrics like felt and leather and PUs and cottons different weights of cottons. I absolutely love it. The book's only £12.99, which is brilliant value for money for how many projects you're getting in here. Just £12.99. I love that rope bowl as well. These storage pots are great, aren't they? Different designs like that. A dog chew, pin cushions, coasters, neck go. pillow. Loads in there. Brilliant. There we are. Just need to press and a bit of trim. Oh, nice. So you just turn that through. Yeah, and just sew the seam back up again. So can't fold straight but yeah amazing that's yeah. so quick and easy isn't and it? that is actually a bit more substantial than those ones where it's the so the you seat. found with h640 that really does yeah. add a bit more just body. adds a bit more welly yeah oh that's good it's 
good to know. It depends on what you're using them for. If you're just yeah. putting this straight into, you know, a plant pot, then it'll be absolutely fine. But if you want to use it as a storage tub for different things, then that's going to be really, really handy to get some H640. George, thank you ever so much for today. You're very welcome. It's when are lovely. you back? When are you back? Second uh, of October. October. Yes, I'm just about to pick up my project. Oh, yeah, nice. it's all very exciting. It's like Christmas every week. Oh, I know, I know, it is so exciting. It's all good. Yeah. Thank you ever so much. Lovely Thank to you. see you. Thanks, Two great projects as well. We'll see you in October. Thank so you. let's do a quick round up before we go of all of these lovely kits. So the book, as I say, was only twelve pound ninety nine. Loads of projects. I love today's projects. Those trays and storage tubs are always really useful and nice gifts for people as well. If you've got a certain fabric that you love and you're buying somebody a plant or you're buying someone a gift, they're lovely little. Um, they are really 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 nice little gift ideas so the bundles obviously we've got all of our uh, pre-printed fat quarters as well which are on the website we've also got our Lewis and Irene bundles where you've got your lovely pink smelly fabric smells like chocolate half a meter and half a meter of your swirls in red and pink for 11 pounds and 49 pence it smells delicious delicious <laughs> we've also got the aqua which are really nice for those storage tray tubs actually you could put nice little chocolates in there couldn't you or as i say a gift for somebody with um, uh, a little thing of hot chocolate so you could do some marshmallows and drinking chocolate and all sorts they'd be really lovely as gifts 11.49 for any chocoholic perfect and it is lewis and irene it does smell like chocolate you're not going crazy if you get it home like why am i just smelling chocolate it is your fabric uh the one that jules was just working with was the hearts with lovely little swirls there is a direction to these and they're so pretty this reminds me a bit of liberty actually you know the garden gates one so pretty it's designer fabric still it's lewis and irene it's absolutely gorgeous half a meter of each 112 wide they're going to go a long way remember with the uh the the bundles that, that uh, Jules had, bearing in mind you get a metre of fabric, she's made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, what I can see, and there's probably more. Uh, she's been so busy making lots of different sizes of those trays, which is brilliant, isn't it, for lots of different storage reasons. We've also got the spot, which is your double dots. It's got the lovely little dashes as well, like the nice little stitches. Really different colourway, this one, quite retro actually. I do like your idea of having them as, um, you know, in the bedroom or in the bathroom to keep your little vanity bits. They'd be really, really nice, wouldn't they? Things like your cotton buds or your cotton wool and things like that. They're ideal. Just 11 49 and that's for a metre of fabric. It's been an amazing day today. Don't forget to check the website and check out if you've bought anything today. I know it's been really, really busy right from the start. We'll go with the early bird. That sold out in 10 minutes. So if you do want anything else to, uh, to make sure that you're eligible, of course, for 1 p.m. all day long, check out as soon as you can. Tomorrow's show, the three of us are back again, Kat, myself and Paul. Who are we in with tomorrow? Oh, yes, it's, it's lovely Kerry. So, not picking Mick. Who's Mick? Who's Mick? Pick and mix. Pick and mix with Cat and Vix. It has a better ring to it than pick and Mick. Who's Mick? Mick um, is my mum's boyfriend, I'll have to tell him. You're on. You're up. You're up. You're on. At nine o'clock, we've got Christmas kits with Kerry. Woo! Oh, it's Christmas tomorrow. I wear my Christmas jumper. Make sure you're there for Christmas. At Ten o'clock, workroom tours, gadgets and deals. Eleven o'clock, Christmas kits with lovely Kerry from Living in Loveliness. Um, there is still another hour of the replay to enjoy, which we did bag making yesterday at eight o'clock. We had lots of PUs and cot canvases and different bag making tips. So, stay where you are, watch the replay, and I'll see you tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. See you then.